All right, are we, are we live? How do I? I am live. Okay. Am I? Is this working? Alright. Hey guys. How's it going? Uh, looks like... Sorry, I'm just gonna fix my bloody... My settings. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So hopefully, hopefully that works out. Also changed my uh, audio settings a little bit. So let me know if I sound weird. I don't know. But uh, yeah, give me a second. Give me a second. Because the reason I wanted to do YouTube is because YouTube can automatically save all my shit, you know, it's automatically save the uh, the VOD. Because I think uh, Twitch's ones they disappear over time, they expire. But if I got it on YouTube, then I don't have to worry about it. Hey, it's got some people in YouTube as well. All right, how's it going, guys? Give me a second. Uh, yeah, that'll do. All right, all right. So, sup, uh, song map. No, you went out first. I think Mr. Knight or Scyther was first. Uh, how's it going? First time chat. Oh, Stasis, yeah, how's it going? Man, your dog faction people are desperate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christy in perfect. Let's go. Yep. Weird stream. Yep. Two favorite Aussies together. Who's the other Aussie? You talking, to <laughs> you talking to someone in chat? What's the YouTube channel? Uh, Weird World 777. It's probably the same as the Twitch, I, I think. You sound like a wonderful human being, Weird World. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> By the way, Weird World, can you kill Shadow in the next update? Put he please, so Scyther can stop making me crazy. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You'll, we'll see, we'll see. How's your day been going? Good, good. It's been raining a lot around here, but uh, I like the rain, so that's all right. <laughs> All I need is a head pat. <laughs> uh, well, that that might happen eventually. We'll see. We'll see. Weird, I love your game. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, well, I'm doing this. What are we looking at? I should probably... Do I need to send out, do I need to tweet every time I do a stream? Is that a thing? Is that what people do? Is that what live streamers do? Do they tweet every time? I can put it in the Discord. I'm not going to tag anyone, but I'm, I'm just going to, just going to chuck it in Discord. The announcements. But, but do people do the tweets? Is that a thing?
Alright, uh, where was I? Weird World, when are you going to give uh, FMMC sexy armor? Uh, it could happen. I've designed plenty of them already, so I could just implement that. Just a matter of the right situation occurring. Yeah, usually tweets, Discord, the whole nine yards. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's not that bad. It's only once a week. I can... I've got to bookmark the bloody Twitter, though. Otherwise, I have to search it up. Uh, says I've got excellent connection. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, we've got people filing in. People are filing in anyway. Do I, do I need to? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Just because. Twitter or X. Fuck. But for the people who stream every day, surely they're not tweeting every day. That they got that they go on live is that is that what people do? They can't be doing that, right? Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe, maybe people just use Twitter a lot, so it doesn't really matter. Going to be doing character. Yeah, I linked the wrong fucking thing. Fucked it. Shit. You have to get fucking premium to edit a tweet? What is this bullshit? Delete that. Just delete it, man. Just delete it. List happening now. All right, all right. Where was I? Careful, wheeled world. You give them an inch, they'll last for a mile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll, it'll, it'll work itself out. I can tell you how this stream is going to go. All the women are going to be perfect character because boobs. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We need the booby monster back. Which one's the booby monster? I've got a lot of monsters. <laughs> there are, a lot of them have boobs. Uh, what do we got here? You have your loyal and loving fans, though. We know where we must be on Saturdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I wanted to get it into, like, a routine that I can just do weekly. So people, they generally know what's happening, and they can show up if that's something they feel like doing, you know? Uh, we need more muscular FMC. Yeah, you know. It'll, it'll happen when it happens. Jordan and Dave should have their own tier list. Did I not put them on? I think I forgot them. Fuck. I forgot Daryl as well. Shit. Can you still add more after you do this? Fuck. Yeah. Not every day, lol, but they do keep in touch with their fans on social media, just with other little posts. Okay, so they don't tweet they're going live every day. Okay. All right. All right. Would we get to clap call next update or would we get blue balled? Uh, I guess it depends on what you mean by clap. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to quickly. Can I? Just thinking if I can make a couple of uh, quick. Quick, uh, quick images for Daryl, Daryl, and fucking Jordan. Probably can. Just real quick. I can find my goddamn file. Um, 
images. Right. Is it Daryl? Be first to come up. That'll do. Save. We'll get. Fox Jordan. There he is. And the clip studio. It will just cut. Edit canvas. Five hundred. All right, that'll do. Make him a bit bigger. That's one down. That's two. And did I not? Alright, that should do it. Now, we'll refresh this. I better do this over here, just in case some files I don't want show up. There we go. Yep, that worked out fine. Right. Hey weird, hope life's treating you well. Had an idea a while back, was wondering if you could enlighten us. With some monsters being ancient, even older than humanity, is there a chance that there for there to be an ancient superhuman? Maybe infected crusader going doomsday in the monster realm? Uh, I mean it's possible, but <clears throat> I don't know how much in detail do I want to go into that. Uh the monsters that are older than humanity haven't necessarily been on Earth during that period. So even if they're older, they could have only come recently, they could have come in the 1500s or whatever. Doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that they've been here the whole time. And also, also the ones that are born on Earth are generally younger. As for an ancient superhuman, yeah, it's possible. Wish the streams weren't at 11 p.m. since I got to go to sleep. I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of them will be earlier eventually. I don't know. It's hard to decide the right time because everyone's from all over the world. So I don't really know. Maybe I'll do a poll of when the most convenient time to stream would be. Because really, I could do it any time, honestly. Because you know, I'm just working at home. So yeah, I don't know. Fuck now, I want a Crusader King mod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting, having a superhuman in Crusader Kings. Are you going to do this in a certain order, like major, minor, or male? I'm just going to do it in the order it is right here. That's how we're doing it. I think that there's an even spread where I can keep things interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is Shadow on the list? Yeah, Shadow's on the list. Is the Christian God just a monster? Did Jesus rise again because he turned superhuman? <laughs> yeah. 
First time chat. Love your game, brother. I started it recently and it became my favorite game. It's incredible. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Carito. Ubu. <laughs> Wait, you know about uh, Crusader King franchise? Yeah, I've got the game. I've got two and three, actually, I think. Yeah. I haven't really uh, played it that much, but, you know, I've got it. Are all the humanoid ancient monsters created for, from humans? No. It would feel a little weird if these very ancient monsters that are supposedly from other dimension look sexy with uh, look like sexy women with big boobies and booties. Yeah, they're not. They're not. Weird world. I'm slowly putting together a shadow romance pod. Oh, yeah. Song saw my big ass word doc for the plot 400 pages so far. Jesus. It's a lot of pages. Yeah, well, good luck. Imagine being a H game dev, but not knowing the hottest incest simulator. It's Crusader Kings incest simulator. I guess can you you can probably marry your relatives in that, right? That's probably a thing, eh? Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. All right, I think uh, we'll read some YouTube chats as well. David Villa, vamos. What does Vamos mean? I don't know. Hi, excellent game. Thanks, Barbara. Barbara? Is there a girl? A girl here? Uh, <laughs> I never know how many females actually play my game, so, so I'm always surprised when I see a, a female name. But uh, yeah, yeah, hey, how's it going? Got some sp Spanish speakers in YouTube? Nice. Marry the villager. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ramno, how's it going? All right, let's just check a couple of things here. Oh, we've got 69 people. <laughs> 69 people in there, Twitch. Yeah, let's see if we can keep that number. <laughs> How much have we got on YouTube? And we've got 11 in YouTube. All right. Nice. Okay. We got the introductions out of the way. The start of the stream. Did I have anything else I wanted to talk about before I get started with this shit? Can't really think of anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to, these, lately I've been thinking about how I want to implement the YouTube side of things. Do I just want to have the whole live stream up? Do I want to cut bits out, like post, like the more interesting things, like specific questions people might want to know, stuff like that. I've been, been thinking about that a bit. And I think what I'm going to do is, because I have a few ideas for YouTube videos, mainly a few personal tips I've uh, come up with, because I, I write everything I think of down at some point or another. So I've thought of quite a few uh, writing things that I think make for a good story. And I've got like a whole list of them. So I was thinking maybe at the start of each stream or somewhere in each stream, I'll specifically make a YouTube video at the start of the stream. Like it'll be, well, not scripted, but it'll be, I'll have notes that I'll go through and uh, talk about for a bit before. And uh, yeah, then I'll just up, Cut that out and upload that to YouTube. And that'll be my YouTube stuff. I think the whole the whole live stream VODs will be there as well. Because I think YouTube records it automatically. So there'll be that as well. But uh, yeah, for my YouTube videos specifically, I think I'll be cutting out stuff like that that I'll be specifically doing on stream. I'm not going to do it this stream because I haven't prepared anything. I can't be stuffed. But uh, yeah, from this one on, we'll get a YouTube video at the start of each stream. That I will make and then cut out. That's that's what I'm thinking. That's my plan. Don't know how well it's going to work out, but that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started in the uh, in the tier list. We've uh, we've delayed long enough. Fuck you. Who, who you saying that to? No, I didn't. Video producer export to YouTube. Yeah, I know how to do it for for Twitch, but uh, since I'm streaming to YouTube simultaneously now, I think YouTube does it automatically, right? That's the thing. So I don't need to like bother about it. Am I am I correct in that? I think that's how it is. If it if it isn't, then I can export it. But I think that's how it works. Anyway, let's get started. All right. Oh, since I refreshed the thing, I bloody lost my my uh, titles for each. Yeah. What did I call them again? Oh, top is perfect. 
character. He was amazing. The well done. Decent. Fully done. All right. No. Right. Okay. Let's let's start this tier list. First up, we got a uh, Alpha Breaker. Right, right, right. From uh, the prison arc. <laughs> yeah. What do I think about Alpha Breaker? He's. I think he's a decent character. We're gonna put him decent. I like. I liked, even though it was short, his motivation for doing the things he does. He does. Like uh, raping other rapists in prison. I think that's kind of based, to be honest. Uh, and I, uh, I think he was a, uh, an entertaining foil for the MC while he was uh, in prison. I, I thought that was interesting. I also thought the scene where he where he hits you over the head with a barbell. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. It splatters your brain across the concrete. Yeah. So overall, yeah, I think I think Alpha Breaker was decent. I'm not gonna say his. Would I say he's well done? I don't, I don't know about that. He, he's such a minor character, I don't know if I'd put him in well done. But I think he, he was pretty decent. You reckon he's well done? Yeah, I don't know. He, he's, he's a bit minor. But then, do I want to rate characters just by how, how minor they are in the story? I feel like that's a bit unfair. I'm going to put him in well done. Because even though he's a minor character, I think I did him pretty good. Dave... Uh, it's kind of sound pretty sad, but I, I'd say he's decent. He, he's he's not as good as Alpha Breaker, <laughs> even though he has more of a role in the story. I don't I, I don't think I did him as quite as well. Uh, recent in the recent memory dream dream memory thing, I think he was all right. I think he was his motivation was pretty good, but I, I don't think he's any anything special. He didn't really move me in a, any particular way, one way or another. So uh, yeah, sucks to be Dave, but yeah, you're below, you're below Alpha Breaker. Daryl, hmm, what do I think about Daryl? See, that's I like Daryl. I'm gonna put him in well done, but I think I could have done him better. I think his his main thing is his relationship with uh, Daryl. Uh, but. I'm not sure how well I landed the emotional side of his character, how he uh, how he feels in regards to his brother. I'm not sure. I could, to be honest, I could have put more effort into it, and I don't know if that reflected as much to the audience. But I feel like I could have put more effort into it. But at the same time, I like how his character has turned out. So, yeah, I think I think he's well done. He's he's not amazing, but he is. He is good for what he is. He's well done for his purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Could have been liking better, but was decent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good shit, man. The cliffhanger was a devious, though. <laughs> Thanks, Byron. Appreciate that. Jordan? Hmm. I'd say he's decent. On the, around the same level as, as Dave. He's, he's basically like the pussy of the group. You know, the wimp, the, uh, the guy that gets pushed around, you know. And, he's, uh, and because of this, he's pretty pissed about most things. He's easily triggered <laughs> by a lot of stuff. Uh, I think he was done all right in the dream memory thing. It was all right. He, he got a bit. He, he, I think he, he was all right. I think I expanded him on him a little bit. I wanted to make these characters a little bit more. Interesting. So I tried to expand on all of them a bit, but I don't think he's amazing by any name, by any means. I I wouldn't even say he's well done. I think Daryl's safely above these two. All right, we got Alaric. <laughs> Alaric, amazing for me. Love that he was actually a good person. <laughs> what if the MC was five foot? How tall is the MC actually? He's not five foot. He's like five three. He's around that. Pretty sad, but, uh, you know, you make do with what you got until you become a superhuman and become <laughs> six, eight or whatever. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello. All right. For me, 
Alaric, he was well done, in my opinion. I like that he was an asshole, a smug cunt in the beginning. I like that. I like that he was uh, pursuing Tiffany in a kind of pointless, you know, uh, romance venture. I, I, I like that quite a bit. I like that his reasons for the things he, d he does is actually, at least it stems from uh, good intentions. It's not necessarily always in good intentions, but uh, it stems from it. He has, a, he has core principles, core values that he adheres to, and that's why he does the things he does. Even though, even in those core values, his core, his core values, they're good, but they're also a little bit fucked up, because those core values also stem from the fact that he thinks he's him and the aristocracy, all his kind, that they're inherently better than peasants and so need to take care of you know, the lower class. So even though his intentions are good, they also stem from, I don't know if bigotry is the right, the right word, but uh, classism, I don't know. He doesn't like poor people, or he thinks he's better than poor people. And I kind of like that. I, I think he's, he's an interesting, interesting character, even though he's fairly inconsequential, except compared to Alpha Breaker, I guess. <laughs> I'd say I like him better than these guys. We'll order that a bit. Ah, Glaikwith. Oh, all right, Glaikwith. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I don't know, how, how should I do this tier list? Should I do this tier list based on how they are in the game currently or how they're going to be by the end of it? Because that changes how a Glaikwith goes quite drastically. I don't know. Should I be doing it for how they are currently, you reckon? Current? Mm, yeah, I think that's probably the better thing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do currently. But I wasn't going to give spoilers anyway, I'm just... But I guess even rating them a certain way uh, would be spoilering a little bit. So yeah, a Glake with Avs currently, I think she's amazing. I like her design probably one of the most... I like her designs one of the most in the game currently. I think they're really... It's really cool and also really hot. <laughs> I like uh, her lore. Like uh, how she's uh, how she was implemented, she kind of with a bit of mystery. She's a bit more, I don't know. Yeah, a there's a little bit more mystique compared to someone like Aisheth that I think keeps her quite interesting and gives her a, almost a more imposing a status as a you know a monster or whatever you want to call her. <laughs> that I think is. Uh, yeah, I think she, it's quite interesting. The atmosphere around her is good. I also like uh, her place in the story currently as the potential mother of someone's child. And I also like uh, the, what do you call it, the myth from which she's drawn from, which would be Beowulf. And I've, I've got some good ideas from how, how to implement that. But overall, I think Glaikwith is one of the more interesting characters in my game. Especially since she's only been relatively recently introduced and hasn't had a whole lot of screen time. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to put her in perfect because maybe if this was future, I, I would, but no. Currently, she hasn't done enough to be, to be a perfect character. Uh, first time chat, Lady Puyaya, currently. Oh, another girl in chat. Nice. <laughs> Liverpool, lol, well, yeah, okay. My waifu, yep, yep. Glaikwith is fascinating, sadly. I can't understand her, but I would still do her. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's another thing. I do, I do like that she speaks in a bit of mixed Old English. I think that's interesting, because that's primarily where the uh, Beowulf mythology comes from. And also because I uh, <laughs> I watched the Beowulf movie when writing this character, <laughs> and uh, they, they speak Old English in that, so I thought, oh, yeah, we'll rip that. We'll take that. That's that's cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Glaikwith feels more sophisticated, I would say. Well, depends against who. Again, compared to Aisheth, I'd say. Yeah, probably. All right. We're moving on to everyone's favorite character. Shadow. Worst character in the game because of all the dog clappers. <laughs> nah. What do I think about Shadow? I think Shadow is well done. 
I like Shadow. I've got big plans for Shadow. Sort of. Well, it depends on how you look at it. But uh, I, I like her attitude. I like that she's a bitch. Literally. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think her banter is funny. That, that's, what, that's the main thing. I think her banter is funny. So, and I like, I don't know, the concern and the relationship she has with Emily. I think both are, both are quite interesting. Both are good. I wouldn't say she's amazing because, I mean, she, she doesn't really do a whole lot, to be honest. She's mainly in Emily's side route and a bit in the main story when you visit Emily. But, uh, yeah, she, so she doesn't do a whole lot. But, you know, the, the implications around her being an intelligent animal, I like that. I like that there's a bit of mystery going along about that. Yeah, so I think overall, pretty well done. Bit of the Nalaric? Yeah, I'd say so. Just because <laughs> I think she's more entertaining to watch. That, that's basically it. I'll take it on God. Fuck <laughs> Shadow for calling me a beta. Well, you are a beta, mate. Sorry, <laughs> I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Okay, that joke was going to send the cult into a frenzy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give her her own category, the good dog category. Category. Yeah, but where would I put that category? That's the question. She's a good dog, though. Very loyal dog. Yeah, this is the brown one, because I couldn't be stuffed fighting the, uh, the black one. I couldn't be stuffed. <laughs> and God, if you see the shadow page on the wiki, I went all. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. All out for the longest she's had for the longest page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you do the Hebrew last update, Weird World? Ah, uh, that's a <laughs> that's a trade secret, my friend. So, uh, I mean, you, you could you could find out yourself, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Raven Knight, uh, yeah, he, he's somewhere around here. We'll get to him. All right, this one. It's a bit hard to see, but this is the seventh interesting character. So far, I'm going to put him uh, uh, put him in an amazing. I like how this character was introduced. I like the dead end that surrounded him. That was my first was it my first? No, it was my second long form dead end. I've got a lot of dead ends in a game. Most of them boil down to you get killed in some unceremonious way. It's relatively short. It's not too detailed. There's a, there's a bit of effort into it, but not as much. Uh, this one, in which the seventh showed up, was the second one that I actually put real proper effort into that showed something of the lore beyond what you'd find in the main story. And I like Easter eggs like that in the game. The actual inspiration behind doing this, by the way, the dead ends, was... Uh, <laughs> If any of you watch ReZero the anime, one of the things I really like about it is each time Subaru dies, an interesting point of the lore also gets, sometimes gets uncovered. And I, I think that's really interesting. Things that you wouldn't normally see that aren't really expanded on, but you just get to see like a hint of it, like just a little taste. And I, I don't know, I like that a lot. So when, when I was uh, making this dead end, I was, uh, I, I was probably, was I watching ReZero at the time? Maybe I just remembered it. Or something. Wrote something down. I write... Anytime a show inspires me in some way, I write it down. So, maybe I was just reading that. But, uh, yeah. I think the seventh is cool. I do enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Could I move the model? Fuck. I should have done that ages ago. Jesus. I guess I haven't... I haven't uh, gotten to a point where I, I, I'm covering the shit, but... There you see all the characters. Yep, that'll do. Okay, okay. Avatar's blocking? Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Always thought the reveal too much did in was a bit strange. I don't know how much it reveals. It doesn't really reveal anything. Yeah, ReZero is really good. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a great 
It's a great anime. I haven't read the novels, but uh, I hear they're good as well. I right, hope we get to see more of them and Val. Yep, sure. Show your legs. Does this character even have legs? It does. I'm not going to show it though, because I can't be bothered. But it does. <laughs> I think Storpo meant the MC revealed too much to Ella. Oh! Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get you, I get you. Yeah. Oh, but that one. That one's a, a little different. I could explain why, but I'm not gonna, because minus spoilers. All right, next we got, how many characters? Oh yeah, I think there was 100 characters I did in total. Yeah. All right, Alexis is next. Uh, what do I think of Alexis? I think her introduction was good. I like I liked her initial fight with Ella and Clark and how it got kind of paired with the Kenny fight. I thought that was interesting. My first like a du duo fight where like multiple things are happening. That was good. It wasn't super long or super detailed, but you know, for so early in my career, I think it was done pretty well. Her therapy sessions, I could have done better in. I don't think I. Uh, I fully expanded that as much as I wanted to. The idea in my head wasn't as didn't entirely make it into the game. So that's one thing thing I think I could have done better. I like her attitude. But we're gonna go well done. Edit. I like her a lot, but uh I like her I d I don't like her initial design, but I like her redesign. And I like, the, I like the core of the design with the piercings and everything. So there's that as well. But uh, so far she hasn't had as much of a role in the story. She's probably one of the more prominent lieutenants, but eh, she still hasn't done too much. Yeah. Alexis, my beloved mummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's hot. Big tits S tier. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, also, I think also think I made her tits a bit too big. But uh, yeah. A little more in-depth of her character could be good for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was asking if I should do it currently or in the future. But yeah, as she currently stands in the story, I think she's just a well done. I think she's done well. But she's she's not amazing. She's not she's not one of the most memorable characters out there. I mean, she's memorable, but she's not she's not, you know. She's not at the top. Alright, we got the Gorgon, monster, big titty snake lady, as she was first introduced. I liked her initial introduction <laughs> through the news. I, I, I like that. I enjoy that. Uh, her fight was pretty good. I think I illustrated pretty well how dangerous a B-class can be. Even even to, you know, level 3 superhumans. Like, uh, she's a different kind of danger compared to the, the big Daryl fight. And it's, you know, it's a smaller scale fight. Obviously, I'm not going to put that much effort into a side monster. But I think I still illustrated how dangerous something like this could be. And that's, that's a monster that uh, the MC has a bit of an advantage against as well. So yeah, I like, I like this uh, monster. I'd say she's... Well, I want to put it well done. No, she, I, don't, I don't think she has enough character for that. She's decent. Sad there was no snake puss. Yeah, yeah, that's just how it goes. It's just too much a hassle to draw. Can we get another one then? Who are you talking about? What, another snake lady? No, I know what you mean. But yeah, but yeah, that's, it. that's how I feel. Next up we got uh, old Jeff. Jeff. The uh, Brianna's boss, former boss. Inspector that was investigating superhumans and such. Had a brief meeting with Klaus, if I'm remembering correctly. I think he was decent. There hasn't really been much to say about him. He hasn't really done a whole lot. But, uh, yeah, I think he's, there's a good amount of mystery behind him, given the dad. I think he is, he's decent. He's all right. Nothing special. Just, is well done or amazing, <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> In a meeting with MC's dad. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember that, but, uh, yeah, I think he, I've got plans for him, but he hasn't, hasn't done anything special enough to warrant higher. 
You put Jordan next to Snake Lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Ah, uh, Kelly. Uh, Amber and Liz's mum. I think she's she was well done. I liked her as the the main antagonist between uh, uh, for Amber's uh, side route. I think uh, a little bit of a twist there, and I think her motivations, well, a little bit cliche, are still interesting. And I think Amber's interaction with it was quite interesting. Overall, I'm quite a, I, I'm quite a, I'm quite happy with how that route specifically turned out. I'm, and I think uh, Kelly contributed to that a fair amount. I think she was good. She's a cunt, yeah, but uh, I think she was well done for what she was. She was a good foil for Amber in her time. Uh, Clove. Hmm. Hmm. What do I think about... Or Clover, full name. What do I think about Clover? I like... I like her. I would say... Just well done. I like her motivations and backstory. I like... Her obsession with uh, Demi, I think it was, I think it was interesting in a way. I think it's a, I don't know how to properly describe this. Her backstory as a, one of Demi's friends from, uh, was it high school or was it middle school? I can't remember which. It was one of the two. I think it was high school. Maybe. Middle school. I can't remember. But uh, her friendship and the friend circle with her Demi's old crew and the, uh, the guilt she felt she felt for uh, abandoning Demi to her, to the, the group, I think it was pretty well implemented. I like that she saw Demi become a superhuman. I thought that was interesting. It was a good scene. And I like that she... Uh, like Demi's power, Demi's powers affected, but not totally controlled her. It exacerbated exacerbated the the problems Clover was already experiencing, and just drove her to pretty much insanity, where she killed all her former friends as a a way of getting justice for Demi, and then eventually viewing her herself as the only protector that Demi could have. I thought I thought she was quite interesting, quite well done. I might even move her up. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I think she was, I think she was good. I, I like how she turned out. Muscular female equals good. Muscle mummy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are, are big fans. <laughs> uh, my favorite character? Hmm, hmm. Your favorite character, Dom? You like it better than Demi? I'm not, I'm not sure what uh, your stance is on that. But yeah. Do I like her better than Demi? Maybe I should move her up even more. Do I like her better than Demi? I, I say I like her and Demi about the same. We're gonna, gonna put Demi in our order. We're gonna put them about together. I think both... One of the difficulties I had in the initial stages of Superhuman was uh, des deciding how I want to flesh out a side route in a way that's short and doesn't take away from the main story, but is also interesting in its foundation by itself. Like, it's hard to tell a story in a short amount of time, one that compels you. And for a lot of the side characters early on, and even the main characters like Amber and such, it was a difficult to, to decide. But Demi, and Clover by extension, had an additional factor that made it even more difficult, and that was that I had to adhere to the ideas of the person paying me to uh, create them, aka Dom. And Dom's initial messages, they provided a very interesting story that I could explore, but they also tackled some things that were very, very complicated and something that you don't typically see done in short form, like very, some mental health type deals that you don't it's not easy to get across in a short amount of time. And so for a long time with Demi, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to prop, how I uh, wanted to implement the entirety of the character. And I think 
Despite that, I did pretty well. Like, re I'm quite happy with how I did it, given how complicated the topics were. I think, I think both Demi and Clover were quite a good pair and were done pretty good. Pretty good, given that they're just a side story, you know? Yeah. What else? What? Let's get into specifics. What did I like exactly? Uh, for one, Demi, I think, at the core, is just an entertaining character. She's just funny. <laughs> like, yeah, the whole superhuman fan club, uh, what do you call it? The hero fan club and whatever. The MC's fan club. I thought that the whole sequence was funny. I liked that uh, <laughs> Demi was bossing everyone around. I, I think, yeah, just the, uh, the attitude of the character is just, is just hilarious. I, I like, I like how it, <laughs> I like how it turns out. So that's, that made the start of making Demi's character quite easy. Because just as a base, Demi was, is just quite entertaining. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy with how I did that. And how I decided that. L later on, I think in the middle of the route, I think was, despite me not kind of fumbling around in that area, because I wasn't, still wasn't sure what I wanted to do entirely. I knew the direction, but I didn't know entirely how I wanted to do it. Despite that, I think it was pretty good. The, where the MC, where Demi discovers the MC's identity and uh, and uh, they do a bit of training and stuff like that and Clover gets steadily more and more unhinged and more jealous. I thought that was quite interesting despite how uh, unsure I was on the progression. And I also think the ending was really interesting with, you know, the reveal with uh, Clover seeing what happened to Demi and uh, what do you call it? The whole ending fight sequence where the MC battles her, and the choice of to kill her, not to kill her, and how Demi reacts to that. I thought I thought it was all it was all quite well done, quite interesting, and I think I think it covered all the topics that Dom initially, well, most of the topics that Dom initially introduced uh, in the DMs that he sent me that for that he wanted to carry. I think I covered most, if not all, of it in a pretty good time frame. So I'm quite happy, generally, with how it all went. I'm ob obviously biased, but I think Demi Root is closer to the best. Emily's might be better. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Not that you think uh, Demi's is the best. That's, you know, fair enough. But uh, that you think Emily's is comparable. Hmm, I'll, I'll get more into that. But, uh, yeah, glad you like it. <laughs> glad you got, <laughs> got what you paid for. That's good. That's good. Demi is well done. Plus, I love the hyper little balls of chaos. Yeah, yeah, I think she was just entertaining. I think you did well and you avoided any landmines. Yeah, yeah, true, true. It's always a tough thing to deal with, with like, mental health and all that. You don't want to, like, uh, even disregarding people's resp uh, like responses and anger towards various things. That you want to portray th these things in both an interesting and a suitable way. Like, if it's too far off the norm or too stereotypical, people will just get bored with it. I, I, I think they're just going to go, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, even disregarding people's responses, which everyone seemed fine with, that no one seemed to be calling me like an asshole or anything for making it. I think, I think it, it went pretty well. Being able to repair their relationship is my favorite part. Not too common of a route. Yeah, I like that as well. I like that as well. That, that's always it's always good to have choices that impact a character's uh, future going forward. Even if the character doesn't do too much after that, just knowing that you had an impact on their life, I think it lets you feel like as a character you're influencing the world more. So I think that's good as well. I also think Demi's monster is really cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll be seeing that again. You did a good job portraying something fucked up as actually fucked up for Demi's story. Yeah, that's another thing I like. Uh, maybe we're going to rank this character high. Would I say amazing? I think maybe. Maybe we will. I, I, I really like how I did these characters. I think they were really good. Yeah, but uh, having situations that are fucked up, but understandable, but you still acknowledge them as fucked up. A lot of, let's say, media does things where they portray certain things as wholly bad or wholly good like no judgment here or super judgment there 
Like, I, I don't quite like that. I like, I like when a character can do something bad in an understandable way, but also, at the same time, like, you still acknowledge that it's bad. It's evil. What you did is fucked. You can still acknowledge that. You don't need to, like, don't need to make characters too sympathetic. I don't, I don't like that. All right. I probably would have done the same thing, so let's both go to hell. <laughs> All right. All right, let's move on. We, we talked a fair bit about these two characters. We've got a... Uh... Fuck, I'm forgetting the numbers. The fifth. We've got the fifth here. Uh, what do I think about the fifth? It's done. It's decent. I mean, it has... <laughs> I like the design. You guys have only... I've drawn, like, the whole character. It's just I only show, like, the top chunk. But uh, I like the design, but uh, other than that, what is what, what, what is it really done? It's, it's done nothing. So yeah, yeah, there we go. Ah, Ella, the poster girl of superhuman. Gonna put her in the perfect character. Well, Ella, I mean, she's a poster girl for a reason. I think she's one of the best implemented characters in the game. I say perfect character. She's not perfect. Like, no, no character in my game is perfect, but it's just the, the name of the tier. But for Ella, I think she's as close to it as I can get. There's not a whole lot I would change about Ella. Really, I can't really, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head I would change. I like how mysterious she is. Like, uh, her motivations, she kind of touches on them, but she never goes into detail. And, it's, and it suits her character that she doesn't, like... She, you can tell on the outset that she's a very secretive type of person. That she likes to mess around with people, fuck around, and not give too much away. And I think the way she goes about, the way she teases, is interesting. Uh, she's, a, she's a good tease. I, I quite like uh, how that goes. I think uh, her fights so far have all been interesting. Versus uh, Alexis and Clark, versus Nico. I, I like how they went. I like how she died. <laughs> and I like her little doll. I think the the little doll plot line was also pretty good. Uh, I do think uh, you know the Emily and Christie's search for clues of Ella, and it resulting in the doll that formed as a result. You know, I think uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I also like her sex scenes. <laughs> All her sex scenes are kind of like non-standard, I guess, except for the threesome. Or foursome. Yeah, with uh, the rest. Yeah, other than that, <laughs> all Ella's sex scenes are kind of like non-standard sex scenes. And I like that. It's not just with, like tentacles and shit. There's, she does like weird, weird stuff. I do appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, mm, I think the stuff I have revealed about Ella so far is also is also quite, it's quite good. I like the photo you find of her and Tannis. Yeah. I think, uh, Ella is one of the most interesting characters in my game so far. And she, she was one of the first characters I ever wrote. So, yeah. Yeah. Got, got lots of, lots of stuff to do with Ella. And I think if you take account of the future stuff I've got planned for the game, I'd say she might be my favorite character in the whole game. Maybe. If you, if you take into account the stuff that happening, stuff happening later, she might be my favorite. Perfect. Perfect, yeah, perfect, yeah. Flawless by design. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how she designed herself, yep. Sock my cock, dog fucker. I assume that's the cypher, yep. Big tits win the day. Ella's tits are pretty medium. Ah, uh, it depends. Uh, something I do sometimes is when I draw, I kind of forget how exactly how big the tits are. <laughs> so Ella's kind of varies a bit, but I don't, I don't mind that. Like, uh, I'm going to leave that as is, because Ella, <laughs> Ella's tits can change, uh, you know, to size. <laughs> Comparatively, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, she's a, probably a little bit bigger than Amber and Liz. Her tits are, so, <laughs> if you call, like, a D cups, E cups, medium. Yeah. <laughs> Ella is S tier for sure. The way she interacts with the story is amazing. The mystery around her is so well done. Yeah, uh, yeah I think so as well. Hello, I speak Spanish, and I would like to say the game is very good. The story is very good. It's a great game. Oh, thanks, mate. I appreciate that. 
I'll be joining the Patreon as a monster. Yeah, glad to have you. Welcome aboard. We've got a new reward going on for the monsters, the, uh, the journals. So yeah, you can check that out. Is Ella coming back? I don't know, man. My God, Tom is going to recruit Weird World. <laughs> I'm just saying future Ella. Tom doesn't know shit about what's happening with future Ella. All right? He's just ju judging based on current Ella, which is still good, but uh, still, I'd say, perfectly done, because I can't really think of anything else I'd change about it. But yeah. Ah, hello, Nanez. Uh, I like her design. She hasn't done a whole lot. I like her powers and how she interacts with Deus. But, uh, yeah, she's just, she's just all right. She's decent. She, uh, I like her name. <laughs> Hello, an interesting name. Oh, what, what was the source of her name? I forgot. I think they were Native American names. Hello, and Nez are both Native American names, I think. I'm pretty sure. I, ca I can't remember. It's, it's hard to remember. But, yeah, I, I do like her name. So there's a, she's got that at least. <laughs> but yeah. What are her powers again? No, I haven't really gone into detail. But she can use her powers to see things, basically. And well, that's only one aspect of her powers. She hasn't done enough to be well done. Yeah, so decent. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Lauren. <laughs> the long lost forgotten teacher. Poorly done. Sorry to say. I, I did have plans to make a teacher romance slash sex group. That was going to happen. And I was going to do a whole thing with her and Jared to kind of expand on Jared's character a little bit more. But I feel like the cheerleader route took care of a lot of that for me, so I didn't really feel the need to use Lauren. Really. So yeah, sadly, she just got left by the wayside. Yeah, poorly done. I, I did her dirty. But uh, her design was alright. It's one of my very early drawings, as you can probably tell. I think she was, I think she, she, originally, she had a bit of a role in the cheerleader route to start with, where she was chewing out Daryl and the MC, but she didn't really go much further than that. Her tits were never used, poorly done. <laughs> yeah, true. <sighs> All right, Derek, Daryl and Daryl's dad. I'd say he's about as good as Daryl. You're around on the same tier. I like that he was uh, kind of abusive in his parenting. Well, not kind of. He hit his kids. He was very abusive. But I like that. I like the portrayal that even if you do something like that, even if you go that far, there is a way you can come back for it. You're not, you're not totally gone. Even though it's... I don't know. Is it unforgivable to hit your child? It probably is. But that doesn't mean the people you love won't forgive you though if the, the people you love are good enough and I think Derek's character it portrayed that kind of attempt at growth the you know you, you're trying to be better you're trying to be a happier happier kind of guy to be an upstanding guy after you really fucked up got sent to prison for being your kids and someone else's kid does the MC get hit I can't remember does he get hit he probably gets hit but uh yeah yeah, I kind of like how how that turned out. And I, I think uh, his character, you know, current tense, he's a chipper personality. He's, he's kind of funny. I think he's a kind of funny character as well. <laughs> but yeah, I think Derek, he was, he was pretty well done. Daryl and Daryl's dad is well done for sure. He helped expand on the past of our friends. That's also true. He did, uh, I think he... Let's just out Daryl and Daryl's character a bit as well. There's different kinds of hitting. Derek was going to do the bad hit. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a difference between spanking and hitting, you know. But uh, <laughs> Derek, <laughs> he went far to the other end. He was, uh, he was punching motherfuckers. So, wait, did he actually punch Daryl? Did, <laughs> did that happen? I'm forgetting my own fucking game. Did, did he actually punch him? He was going to punch him. Did he punch him? No, Daryl punched him. He, he, he did the old switcheroo. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, he's not unforgivable, right? He, he didn't do the full punch. MC gets thrown, Daryl gets grabbed. Yeah, so he didn't even do the full punch. I mean, it's still not good, obviously. But, uh, you know, 
better than like beating the shit out of him. Although there's a fair bit of emotional abuse happening as well, which is never good. So you you don't want to see that. But yeah, I like the story of even though it was short. I also I kind of like that it was short. I like stories that tell a bit, tell quite a bit, but uh, were also quite short. I like that. So yeah, yeah, the the, the short story of redemption, of, of at least trying to be better. You know, I think that's good. I think that's interesting. He tried to punch punch Daryl, but Daryl got his. <laughs> tried to punch Daryl, but it got his ass beat. Yeah, yeah. When are we gonna turn Cole into a proper gender bent owner hole? Nah, yeah, you know, it, I'll just say it's not gonna happen. Uh, I'll just tell you that. Cole, the uh, the main man of last update. What do I think about him? So this puts me in a tough position because if this was done an update later, if I had the update I was currently working on versus the update that has been released already, then this might be different. But right now, Cole... He's, he's well done to a degree. I... He's an interesting foil. And kind of a little bitch. You know? Like the kind of character you like to hate. He's kind of an asshole to everyone. It's kind of an all-around prick, really. A very one-dimensional character. But, uh... I do like his powers. I, although you haven't seen too much of his powers yet. And I do like the way he's implemented. So far, for his point in the story, for where he is in the story, I think he's implemented good enough. He's just a little one-dimensional right now. But that'll change. But yeah, I think he's... He's well done. You know. He's better than Alpha Becker. He, he could be better. Cole is less of a coward than Jared, so I like him more. Mm. He makes Jared look redeemable. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to be zero dimensional soon. <laughs> we'll see, mate. We'll see. We'll see. Hi, Sharab. How's it going? He did, and he was going to break Daryl's arm. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that happened, didn't he? Derek was going to break Daryl's arm. That, that is pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, true. Shen. Hmm. Shen. Uh, despite being introduced later, I do like him better. I like Shen. I think he's a good character. He's uh, less one-dimensional than Cole as he stands right now. I like that he's a good mix of of a normal guy, but also kind of an he's kind of an asshole as well. He does what he does for a reason, and it's clear that he does what he does for a reason. Still an asshole though. He's still doing bad shit. But you know, he's there are good parts to him as well. He's he's quite loyal. And I think and I think his powers are cool. Yeah. He's a spoiled little brat with a stick up his butt, but with an interesting future. Yeah, yeah, that's... I assume you're talking about Cole. Shin is really cool. Yeah, I think he's pretty cool. I like his design as well, by the way. Like, uh, Cole's design I, I like too, actually. The, like, kind of goth kid, you know? But Shin's design I think I like better. Yeah, I mean, which makes sense, I did him later. Cole got a sort of soft re redesign, but Shin is, like, he's... He's a lot more detailed. I like, I like how he looks. And I like his powers. He hasn't been around yet, yeah. Shin is a mama's boy. Mm, yeah, kind of, yeah. Weird World can get the Ouija board update to talk with Laurie. <laughs> Did I put Laurie on here? Yeah, she's here. We'll get to Laurie. Cole should be brutally slayed by the MC. He's utterly disgusting. Well, I'm, I'm glad you think that. Means I did my job good. And he was implemented to a decent degree. Shin is chill as fuck. Yeah, I like that aspect to him as well. He's kind of a chill dude. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, I think he's, he's a good around here. He's well done. Maybe I should be making more tears. I feel like some of these should be separated. Maybe I'll do that later. Marcus? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What do I think about Marcus? He has an interesting backstory. I think he plays a good role 
in Alice's life. Like, uh, he, he doesn't do much, but for the role he plays, I think he's... He, he does well for uh, what he's there for. He, he does his job well. He's kind of a... I like that he's outwardly a very nice guy. Like, when you meet him, he's, he's very... He's just a good dude. Lends you his suit, you know? Likes that you're dating his daughter. Or that you're not dating at the time, but he likes the prospect that you might date his daughter. So, yeah. Alice's dad randomly smashing the guard skull was badass. Yeah, sure, yeah. I haven't gone too much into detail on that either. So th there is more for Marcus to do. He's not out of the picture. But uh, for what he's done so far, I think he's, I think he's pretty well done. Yeah. And I also like that as a father, he probably was a little bit abusive as well. Not as directly and ill-mannered as Derek, but, but he was, he, he wasn't a, a very good father. Well, it depends on what you, you want, really. But uh, yeah, he was. I like I like that aspect to him. That, that even though someone can be outwardly seen or perceived as a nice guy, there is a bit of. There's always something you know down below, you know. Mark is one of those characters that set up and fleshes out more relevant characters, so I can't see them being higher than well done. Yeah, yeah, for now, for now. Marcus makes Alice feel like an actual character. Yeah, I think he does that well. It's always important to have characters like that. Holy shit, finally Twitch keeps connecting me since fucking Dave. Oh, that sucks. Ah. I think Marcus would have a Bruce Wayne abusive. Is, is Bruce Wayne abusive? I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess he raises Robin. I don't know about his actual son, though. Was it John Wayne? I can't remember. Abuse done out of love and caution. Yeah, true. Marcus is a cr is criminal family abusive. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good way to put it. Marcus' dad. Now that guy is a dickwad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't put him. I didn't put him on the list because there's not enough about him yet. But uh, we'll, we'll see more of him. Missed your first dream, but managed to catch this one. Keep up the good work with Superhuman. Oh, glad to hear it. Toxic botanism. Appreciate it, bro. I love your game so much. Thanks, Sharab. All right. Ah, Dexter. Dexter. Tiffany's dad, the boss, the big man himself. Leader of hero, sort of. He, he runs the meetings. <laughs> it is not necessarily the, the most powerful. I like him a lot. I... How much do I like him, though? Hmm. I'm not going to put him in amazing. I like him better than Alexis. He's he hasn't done enough yet to be amazing, in my opinion. We haven't gotten enough into his character yet. I like the mystery surrounding him and his relationship with Tiffany. We haven't gotten too much into his relationship with Claudia, but with his relationship with Tiffany, I, I like quite a bit. They're kind of like very, it's very, I don't know if cold is the right word. A little detached, because they're both kind of, they're both very cold people in a way. Although Dexter is a lot more personable than Tiffany is. Yeah. Mm, yeah, and I, I like that. I like the difference. It kind of shows a bit more, it shows both the immaturity of Tiffany and also the maturity of Dexter, that even though he's at heart cold and kind of not too good of a person at his heart, much like Tiffany, even though he's got, he still understands the value of people and he's able to connect to people quite a bit more easily. It is, he's a little bit more personal than Tiffany is. And I like what that shows about both characters. I, I appreciate that. It'll get fleshed out more as he progresses and as the story progresses, but I do, I do like it. It gives me vibes that he was on a similar level to Michael's dad. You mean Marcus? Hmm. Maybe. He did avenge his middle son. Hmm. Yeah. Lexi is top three, in my opinion. Yeah, a, a lot of people like Lexi. And I can see why. She's got a, she's got a fun, per not a fun, an engaging personality. 
that I think a lot of people like. It's just hot as well, so. <laughs> Low key hate Milliken, really? The Dexter one? Hmm, interesting, interesting. Will we get more info on Dexter's wife? Mm, yeah, probably. Dexter is well done, plus he introduces us to Hero. So more big titty women. <laughs> yeah. Dex plops out two big titty hotties. Perfect. True. He, he, he did give us Tiffany and Claudia. Yeah. <laughs> you can give him credit for that. CDC, we have like four. What, what's CDC? Wait, what? CDC? What is that? Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Clove, Tess, Kira, the cheerleader. Oh. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Johan, the uh, only named Aldang grunt. He's all right. He's decent. He, he doesn't play too much a role. He helps you out in prison. I think he was a pretty nice guy. His motivation... Oh, we'll move him a bit higher, actually. Yeah, he, he's interesting. No, well, interesting is probably the wrong word. He, he does the job he does good enough. You, you don't see too much of him, but, you know, his role as Alice is kind of the lieutenant. Yeah, he, he does good. He does good. He's nothing special. Right. Tess is black. He's more tan. I don't know who you're talking about. I think Daryl calls Tess black. Yeah, I mean, she's kind of like African descent, something like that. Sort of. He makes the Mafia seem more normal after all of this super shit. Yeah, yeah. He's alright. Uh, Brianna. What do I think about Brianna? I think she's good. She's probably done pretty well. She, she's, at the start, her position in the game was kind of limited. I think I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the character at the time. You know, she was a stripper and as a cop. Later on, I had to investigate the MC a little bit more. I initially planned on having that route extend quite a bit more, like her having her own side route where she'd investigate the MC, all he's doing and all that. Never really got around to it. And so I implemented her more in the main story instead. But, uh, yeah, I think I like her role in uh, helping with Val Raven about trying to get the cops and the soldiers and all that to help more out, help uh, the MC out. I like that in the event that you can't defeat Val Raven by yourself, that she helps you. I think that's good. And I liked her TV appearance. I don't think she's an amazing character. Let's put her... But she, she, does, her, she does her job. I won't forget that you said she has parts of the news reporter you cut, Jen, right? Yeah, yeah. Her not getting a side route got her into the main story. That's some Hollywood shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Background actress got a name role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I like, you know, her aspect as a normal human trying to do good. I think it's fine. Kira. Uh, what do I think about Kira? Uh... She's decent. She hasn't... Mm. She hasn't done a whole lot. I like her design. Muscle... Girl. You know, muscle mummy. But she... She had a fight, and I like her fight. I thought her fight was really good, actually. I'm quite happy with how that fight went. That said, her role in the fight wasn't necessarily the most interesting. Like, I think Elijah was, the, like, the more interesting combatant in that fight. Although I, I liked the dialogue she had. I think that work is a good pair, I'll say. But her on her own, I don't know if she's, she's done enough in the game yet. She's pretty newly introduced. She hasn't had much of a chance to uh, shine, you know. But yeah, her, participa her particip participation was solid. Yeah, I agree. I love her powers, to be honest. I do too. Although I haven't really expanded on them. I do like her powers. 
I like her origin as well. I haven't really explained her origin either. But yeah. She was good. Just decent though. Uh, Minyak. Uh, Minyak was pretty good. As a villain. Kind of like a generic monster. That, you, that even as a level 1 you can kill. Wait. A, well, you can. The MC does until he's level 2, but you can. And then, uh... The fusion thing for the, uh... The fight in the street afterward. I think that was interesting. I thought it was a, a fairly cool fight. It wasn't my best fight. Because I kind of, like, uh... I kind of switched her, uh, switched her in. Kind of, like, not last minute, but as the update was coming out, you know? There was a... Yeah, I think eh, the lore behind her is interesting as well. And I like the design. I like the design of the giant form. I like the design of the small form. I think all around the Minyak, they're decent. They're decent. Where's the corpse girl? Nah, uh, she, she didn't make it. She didn't make the cut. Sorry, mate. She helps establish how low-tier monsters are still a big threat to humans. True. And that's a good role to play. Nico. Hmm. I think she was introduced a little bit after Alexis. Mm, yeah, during the Klaus arc, she, her initial appearance. Despite that being newer than uh, Alexis, I, th I think I like her better. I'm gonna say amazing. I like, I like that she's a bitch, and I like her attitude. I like that she has reasons for being a bitch as well, like uh. The people she respects, she respects, even though she's still kind of cunty to them. But uh, people that she doesn't respect, she treats like shit. I, I think that's an interesting dynamic. Like, uh, you know, there's the classic anime Sundari di dynamic, where they just, they treat you like shit generally. For no real fucking reason. They, they, just, they, <laughs> they, they just don't like anyone. They're just, they're just cunt. But I feel like, even though Nico is kind of like that, she doesn't really have a Dere side, actually. But even though Nico is kind of like that, she does have s specific reasons for why. Not like stuff in her past or anything. That's not what I mean. I mean, she evaluates each person individually and treats them like shit based on that. You know? And I think that's interesting. Also, like, uh, her motivations, her exploration of the stars that was briefly mentioned, and will get expanded upon. I think that's good. I like her, kind of, uh, her fight with Ella. That was good. I think, yeah, yeah. Teleportation is introduced a lot in a lot of media. But I don't think most people display how fucking overpowered it can really be. And I think Nico is a good rep representation of that. How fucking broken teleportation is. And even then, I think that also, in turn, kind of hypes up Ella for being able to compete with that. So I think her role in the story is good. I think she's been done very well. What are my more liked characters in the game? In fact, we're going to put it out here. She does kind of mellow out once you prove yourself. Yeah, like I said, she has, she has reasons for acting like a bitch to each person. Like, uh, it's not like all, she just treats everyone all the same. There's reasons for each. Teleportation is OP. Yeah, just like time powers. Yeah, yeah. I already read that. Why can't I not say participation? Fucking hell. Briar. Hmm. Hmm. He's. He's decent. He's alright. He, he hasn't really done much. He's a quiet kid. And that shows in the, in the story. There's not too much. Not too much he's been doing. Uh, I, I like his uh, kind of. Shy nature, he's he doesn't like to interact with people too much. I like that of the sin kids, he's probably kind of the best natured one of them, and that he kind of you know, uh, relates to the to the monster side quite a bit. He enjoys their company a lot more. Yeah, he's a mu more humane part of sin. I agree. Yeah, uh, Lawrence. Tiffany's butler. Yeah. 
He's alright. He's just a respectable fellow. He does doesn't do doesn't do much of anything. Yeah, there's literally nothing we can say. I I'd say it's poorly done, but it's just what would be poorly done about him? He he does his job. <laughs> he lets you into the mansion. What more is there to do? <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Am I gonna have any characters that are more poorly done? Maybe I should rename and just chuck all the less interesting characters down there. Yeah, all right, that's what we're gonna do. Hmm. Actually, am I gonna do that? Hmm. Nah, we're gonna leave it as is. Lawrence, Xanth, and Stephen, three some when? Nah, soon, mate. Soon. Boring to you? Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Do I want? Yeah, what will make it boring to you? Uh, add a row below. Does the color matter? What? Ah, oh, fuck the one that was already there. Shit. Is that right? Whatever. <laughs> uh, boring. And we'll put old Lawrence in here. Sorry, Lawrence. You're just boring. What color do I want this poorly done to be? Do I have anyone else I want in boring? Eh, probably Johan. Sorry, Johan. Jeff? Nah, I like Jeff. Yeah, we'll leave it. Alright. Uh, make the car as neutral as possible. Yeah, I think grey is pretty neutral. Uh, Alistair. Yeah. He's kind of boring, if I'm honest. It's interesting that he's leader of the... Actually, no, the negotiation with Dexter was alright. He's decent. Because, uh... <laughs> mafia hat... <laughs> Poor old Mafia hat. But, uh, yeah, Alistair, I was watching, what's the movie? Independence Day? Is that, is that the right movie? With Morgan Freeman? I was, I was watching, watching some movie like that when I, when I designed the character. I like his design, the dark skin with the blue eyes. I think that was interesting. Uh, his interactions with Dexter, I th like the negotiation, the politics, I don't like too much politics in the game because I feel like that when stories try to introduce too much of that, it kind of drags on, you know. But I, I think uh, I kept Alistair's short enough that it was still, you know, intriguing enough. So, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. Knock it down, Alpha. Alpha wasn't that good. You're right. You're right. But yeah, Alistair. Yeah, it was it was decent for what he did. His role in the dream was interesting, ish. But yeah, there's nothing much more to say. Uh, the third. Hmm. Hmm. Where do I want to put the third? Yeah. Father. Yeah. Hasn't done too much in the story so far. Hmm. He's decent. Hasn't hasn't done hasn't done too much. Yeah, Slender Man, yeah, yeah. He, he's just alright. He, he I say he, it's not really a he. Even though they kind of Yeah, uh, it's kind of a he. But uh yeah. He's just decent. He's just decent. It's a it's a monster. Showed up. Infected you. Hasn't really done too much since. Other than brief flashes that haven't. 
Not gonna lie, when games talk about those topics, not necessarily politics, but topics that can flash out the characters' opinions in some shape or form, even though it's not appropriate for H games, it's a cool feature in overall. Other types of games to make the player feel conflicted about their opinions gives depth depth to the character. Uh, L M F A O. Yeah, well, when I mean politics, I don't actually mean like personal opinion type politics. I think that's that's interesting to go into as long as it's like as better over time. What what I mean by politics when I say it gets boring is like the actual structural government politics, like, you know, <laughs> like who you're going to vote for. Like, <laughs> no one wants to hear too much about it. People like to hear a little bit to know that it exists in the world, but they don't want too much. But yeah, personal views of like, like characters' politics to flesh out their opinions. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to see. To an extent. All right, Divana. Mm, mm. What do I think about Divana? I like her attitude. I like her design a lot. I think she has a really cool design. Hmm. Hmm. But. But do I think she's a good character? So far, she's decent. She's better than Helena. Better than these guys. Better than this guy. Better than Kira. Yeah, uh, I like her. She's... I like her, her attitude is kind of, she's not bitchy, necessarily, but she's a little bit playful, but also a little bit serious. Uh, I think she strikes a good, unique middle ground compared to a lot of my other characters. I have some characters that are more tease type characters, some that are cold and kind of, you know, not too emotional. I think... Devana is a good, a good in-between type of personality. A little bit different compared to a lot of the other ones. Decent tits, decent rank. <laughs> yeah, small tits, yeah, yeah. That's tough, that's tough. Yeah. Alright, Aisheth. I like Aisheth. She's... Would I put her in Amazing, though? She's not as good as a Glaikwith. But I do like her armoured design. Like uh, the outfit I had for like the final stages of the fight. I thought that was really cool. We'll put her in amazing around here. I think she was cool. I like her lore. I think her personality is kind of like a sadist. It's something new to superhuman. So I like that. I don't think she's as mysterious or as intriguing as a Glaikwith is. But I still think she's pretty damn good. She's pretty damn good. Yeah, her design's really good. And her powers are really good as well. She has a good role in the story, I think. Yeah, the old twin snatcher. Although I do wish I... Do I wish that? I don't know, I feel like maybe I should have mentioned twin snatching earlier in the game. Like, foreshadowed it a little bit more. But, I think a couple of updates before she actually shows up is enough. You don't need to do that much foreshadowing. But yeah, I think she's alright. Aisheth gave us one of the best fight scenes. Yeah, her fight scene was good. I'll say that her fight scene was good. Yeah, for sure. Alright, Pitch Breaker. Uh, he's kind of boring. He doesn't... He doesn't do a whole lot. He's uh, kind of like threatens the MC. Gets humiliated. And that's, that's about the extent of his character. Alpha Breaker's bitch. Yeah. So th th there's no... Not much need to say about him. Dell. <clears throat> What do I think about Dell? Dell was... <sighs> he's, I think he's well done. But whereabouts are well done. I'd say here. Dell, I think... His whole backstory in his goal, his reason for living, I think it was really interesting. I like, I like how he, uh, well, for one, I like that he revealed the MC's identity. I think that was good. That was an interesting plot point. But also, I, like, I liked his interaction with the MC before then, like the, the mission you guys went on. I think that it gave details about the characters without revealing his actual goal or intention. I thought that was quite cleverly done, if I do say so myself. And I like the reveal 
that uh, when he was finally unmasked, you know, I, I thought that was that was pretty well done. All of that was pretty well done. I think his powers were a good deviation from Daryl because you don't want them all have to have the same fucking powers, you know. And they're just doing the same shit against each other. I think Dell's way of fighting was interesting. And it also speaks to how his character adapted, you know, having to work with Hero. So yeah, I think uh, Dell was pretty good. Pretty good. I also like his relationship with Laurie. I think that uh, kind of grounded his character a fair bit. Even though it doesn't really change his mind or anything. Because I think that would be cringe, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. Also, he is ground to reality when fa facing facts. Yeah, yeah. Daryl's well done. He helps uh, Daryl progress in his everything a lot. He's also a little shit, so props to him. Yeah, yeah. I think he made a good villain. I love how mad he is about being half-baked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Daryl wasn't annoying. He was just really stubborn. Yeah. I, I like him. I like Daryl. All right. Angelina. What do I think about Angelina? I don't like her initial design, but I like her redesign. I'll say that. I think the new design I came up with for her is quite good. Quite good. But I think the old design, and what a lot of the old H scenes, which are going to need to be updated, a lot of them are pretty, pretty lackluster, I'd say. She's decent. She had a bit more time than Helena. Hmm. Yeah. I, I like it. For her character, unlike a Dom, the guy who uh, paid me to make Angelina didn't have much in the mind with story. Didn't have a. Well, I say that. He's, what he had in mind for story was bigger and bigger tits, and even bigger tits, and then tits that get even bigger as well, on top of having tits. So that that was <laughs> that was the, the story that happened with that. So making a plot that involved that, it was a little bit a little bit strange to to grapple with. And well, I don't think it turned out bad. I don't think it was one of my best side roots. I think I had a lot of better side roots than turned out. Yeah. The whole stalker situation was decent. The fight at the end with the, what do you call it, the bat cow monster, it was alright. I like that she can die. Uh, that's one thing I'd, I'd really do appreciate. I like that she can, if you fuck up, it kills her. That's good. I think that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, other than that, there's not too much to say about her. She was, she was just decent. She was a decent character. Character pitch, huge honkers. That's basically it. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's it. Man knew what he wanted. Yep. Yep. Bigger and bigger tits. Yeah, and she'll... Oh, I've been meaning to do another sex thing with her, actually. But I just haven't got around to it. But, uh, yeah, you know, with her new style. I've been meaning to, but, you know. Because I really like her redesign. I think it's really good. All right. Uh, the zombie. Okay. Bailey. Hmm. Hmm. I think she's well done. I I like her. She's cute. She's kind of she's got the airhead quality, but different to Sila, who's uh has the chipper airhead quality. She has like the uh, cold airhead quality, where she's she doesn't have much emotions, much expressions. She's just stupid, but. In an understandable way. There's reasons why she's stupid. Simple and innocent. Yeah, exactly. She's simple. She's a simple character. And I, I quite like that. She doesn't understand a lot of the world. Mostly due to how fucked up her memories have become. And, uh, yeah, she's... I like the interac interactions with her. I like her, pers her core personality. Her side route wasn't particularly interesting. I didn't do too much with it. It was mainly about her meeting the people she met in... She knew in real life her parents, her, her ex-boyfriend. And even then, we didn't go too in-depth with that because she's not all that interested in them. But I think her as a 
just as a character and as a concept, worked pretty well. Also liked her... Uh, I don't know if law is the right word. Her uh, her desire. The pulls that, you know, kind of ate at her. The moon, the sea. I haven't really gotten into detail about it, so I'm not going to really talk about it. But I think it's interesting. Simple and clean is the way she's making me feel good tonight. Yeah, I do know Kingdom Hearts. I, I used to listen to that song all the time. Bailey's high, well done. Put her higher. After this new update, she got way better. I don't know if she got way better. I think she was good. I don't know if she's way better. Oh, I'm going to leave her as is. Is she better than Cole? Nah, nah, we're going to leave her as is. Nikki. Prison bitch. That enjoys. Well, it doesn't really enjoy. That pretends to enjoy being a prison bitch. I think Nikki... Is decent. He's, he's up there with Alpha Breaker. <laughs> Funny character. Good personality. I like that even though he pretends to be like a, you know, the happy-go-lucky kind of guy who doesn't mind going, getting fucked by all the dudes in prison, he actually hates it and is uh, looking to escape by it in any way he can. I like that. It's an interesting concept. I didn't really go too in-depth with him. I also like that you can shape his future, you know. Gender Vandom and all that. Makes you feel like, you know, your character's influencing stuff. Influencing stuff. So yeah, Nikki is, is a decent character. Uh, Clark. Hmm. Hero. Not as good as Alexis. I'll put him here. He, he was decent. He's well done. He's well done. He's a, kind of a, one of the few outspoken, moral, morally good characters in Hero. And even though I portray Hero as a very morally grey or even dark type of organisation, I think it's important to have characters that kind of break away from that. That, sh that show that there are people who just want to do good, you know? Not everyone's just looking out for themselves. People... Like people like this exist in the world who just who genuinely want to be a good person, who genuinely want to help people. And I think it's good to have those types of characters. And he's also, yeah, he's a he's a chill guy. Main character of a different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If this was another type of story, we could probably have Clark as the main character. I mean we don't need Nikki involved in the main story, but maybe just a side story. Yeah, we'll see what happens. If I get time for it. Uh, Danica. Danica is... Ooh, well done. Well done. She's... She's good. Danica is great. <laughs> great design. I do like her design. A lot. I redesigned her a little bit in the last update, I think. And I like that as well. Uh, it's like a soft redesign, because I like the core of her. I didn't change too much. I, I just kind of like fixed it up a bit. But yeah, I do, her design is one of the best in the game. I think it's one of the most eye-catching in the game, I think. Her powers were also interesting. Her fight was also interesting. Maybe I'll bu bump her up higher. Not as good as Adele, but... Yeah, her fight was, was quite interesting. I like showing how dangerous a superhuman can be. Like with how stupidly broken her powers are. And I like how difficult it is to beat her. Because for Danica, there's quite a few dead ends. You make one wrong choice and Danica kills you. Because she's so much more powerful than you are. And I like that. I think that's, that's good. That's good. Kind of shows what kind of world you're living in. That a, a character this dangerous could fucking kill you. Danica fight makes a lot of sense when you realise she's a fucking level 2. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's how it should be. Like... Beating a level 2, it's not impossible, it's just, it's just the chances are you're going to die. And that's, that's what you have to deal with. Like the MC, the chance, there's a lot more vic uh, losing conditions than there are victory conditions, you know? That's how it should be when fighting someone stronger than you. And the same with Val Raven. Uh, Charlie. Hmm. Hmm. Charlie. Jeez. 
She's well done. I'd say she's about on par with Cole. She's a good character. I like her. I like her powers for one. Her powers are very interesting to me. And I'm looking forward to expanding on them. I think she has one of the most interesting powers in the game, actually. And uh, her design is alright. I'm gonna. Hmm. I say I'm gonna redesign. But. Since she's a level 3, when she gets to level 4, the redesign might take care of itself. Maybe I'll. So I'm probably not gonna redesign her beyond this. Just that level 4 will give her a new, a new look. So you can look forward to that. But, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like her goal of uh, reviving her brother. And how she kind of brings back an old character that didn't get enough time to shine. Which I'll get into later, because I'm pretty sure Oscar's here somewhere. Is Oscar here? I'm sure I put him in the fucking thing. Must be. Yeah, he's here. He's here. Yeah, yeah, I like that he brought back a, an old character that was interesting but didn't get too much time to shine. I think her motivations are just, yeah, it's good. Her interaction with Ella is good. I think she's all around just a well-implemented character for where she is in the story. Yeah. She's a bit frustrating. What makes you say that? I can guess, but I'm just curious what makes you say that. Oscar was great. Yeah, I like Oscar as well. Oscar versus Michael was great. Yeah, it was a good fight. Actually, Oscar vs. Michael was one of the fights I was more worried about. I wasn't sure how uh, people would uh, respond to it. The idea of human, a human being able to do the things Michael can do. But I think I did it pretty good. And I think it turned out quite well. And I'm glad people seem to really like it. Uh, both characters after that. People really like Michael a lot. And by extension, they, uh, they like Oscar. So yeah. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, All right, Lisa, Lisa Gordon. She is decent. She's she's up here with Kira. Hasn't done too much. Very flirty type character, kind of a a whore. But <laughs> I mean that's a bit harsh. What's the what's the better word? A slut. Yeah, a slut. In a in the nicest way. But uh. Yeah, I think uh, her interactions in the library were fun, enjoyable. Nothing really special, nothing really engaging. Too engaging. But that, that, was, that was just fun. She's a fun character to talk to, to interact with, I think. And, uh, yeah, we haven't gotten too much into her other than a, a little bit of her rivalry with Nico. But uh, we have an experienced lover. Yeah. <laughs> to be frank, who isn't a slut in Superhuman? Even MC is one when he turns to a girl. Aren't all guys sluts, though? Isn't that the reality of the world? All men are sluts. Most of them, anyway. She makes libraries cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, are most women in superhuman sluts? I don't know. I'd say they're easy. They're, 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 <laughs> the, the women in superhuman are easy. Most of them, anyway. Like, uh, you get to have sex with quite a few women quite early into your relationship. But just because they're easy doesn't necessarily mean they're sleeping with a lot of guys. So let's have a look. Oh, the character's here. Ella, she's easy for the MC, but she hasn't necessarily slept with a lot of guys. Her body count's pretty low. Wait, is body count how you judge sluttiness? Is that, is that how that works? Uh, I, I'm going to say it is. Glakewith, yeah, she's, she's a, she gets around. Nico doesn't really get around. Unless she finds a guy she respects, to a degree. Aisha gets around. Clover does not get around. Demi, hmm, kind of in the middle. Alexis does get around. Yeah. Danica doesn't. Charlie doesn't, obviously. Fucking Sigai. Kelly doesn't. Bailey doesn't. Rihanna, medium. Nikki does, but, but not necessarily voluntarily. Well, voluntarily, but not happy about it. Gorgon. Does if get if she gets the chance. Devana doesn't. Lisa does. Kira doesn't. Angelina. Medium. Alona doesn't. So they're not all sluts. They're, they're 
just some of them are a bit easy, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? I can't remember what the last character I did was. Who was I on? Ah, I forgot. Who was I talking about? Any of you guys remember? Lisa, ah, oh, Lisa, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, sluts, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah she's, uh, she's a bit slutty. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that's fine for a character. Mix them up a bit. Thanos, next guy. Ooh, what do I think about Thanos? Hmm, hmm. This was the future. I put him here, but for now, I'm going to put him here. Thanos is one of the f my favorite characters that I've written so far. We haven't gotten too far into him, but for the amount that we have gotten into him, I'd say he's, he's played his role almost perfectly. I, I'm not sure I would change anything about him so far. Let's put it like that. <laughs> With a lot of characters, I can think of a few things I can change. But Thanos, even though he's only recently introduced to the story... I don't think I'd change almost anything about him. If anything, I'm, I'm not sure I'd change anything about him. I think he's a really well done character. I like, uh, what, what do I like about him? I like his attitude towards science. I think his personality as a baseline is interesting and, it, and it's engaging to the audience, I think. The way, the way he talks, the way he uh, approaches people. I think he's uh, the atmosphere he gives off. He's a very atmospheric type character. And I think he's, he's quite interesting in that respect. I also like the, what do you call it, the role he plays with Daryl and the Rebus. I think that's quite interesting as well. Like the, the law, he doesn't really have law per se of himself, but the way he uh, presents and communicates the law to the audience, I think he's well done. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's not the perfect character, just because we haven't seen enough of him to go up there. But I think so far he's one of, he's one of the characters I enjoy the most at the moment. Tennis took the Megamind Masterclass of Villain Presentation. <laughs> Is he the one that made Ella a superhuman? Oh, you have to wait and see. Hope Ella can... Rev Revive killing everyone like a t killing machine on steroids. That would be funny. <laughs> I like his design. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I also like his design. I think he's cool. I don't know. How did I come up with it? I can't remember. I must have looked at someone. Like a villain. Because he's got the, that big villain collar. <laughs> so I, I probably I looked at Google for him. And gave him like the scouter type thing. Yeah, yeah I, do, I do like a... Uh, I do like him. He's a design. Jess. Jess was... Hmm. Oof. Well done. I think she was well done. Yeah, she was well done. Better than Danica? Yeah, I think she is. I like her. I think her route, the cheerleading route, was good. I kind of fumbled in the middle a little bit in the cheerleading route, but I think the start and the end were quite solid. And her whole interaction with Jared and stuff. I think she's pretty good. Not, she's not amazing. She doesn't do anything exceptional. But she's probably what you'd call a classic Cinder. Like if, uh, if Nico is like a, a deviation, then Jess would probably be the, the classic. Where you just, over time... You get closer and closer, even though she doesn't know it's you, she thinks that hey, you're female MC. And I do like that her whole route includes a lot of female MC content. I like that. And how she gets close to that. I do appreciate all that. And I think, yeah, yeah, the way her character develops over time and softens, is, is, she softens at a good pace, I think. Yeah, yeah. I also like her design. And her redesign as well. Like, she got a flipped version of what Brianna got. Yeah, kind of. Just was fun. 
This was well done, but she felt like she was in an awkward place of being between main route and side route. Hmm. Was she ever main route? I guess she was kind of hinted a little bit in main route when she was in the, uh, the massacre at the party. She was, like, kind of part of it. Uh, isn't Clark able to kill you, like, three separate times? That's more than most. Pops to him, honestly, if two were accidental. Is it three separate times? Yeah, there's... I remember two. I don't remember the third. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah. Who will marry the main character? Well, it depends. Alright. Man, we've still got a fuckload left to go. How many have I done so far? Now, oh, we'll get through it. I'm going to go to it. I'll be back. I'm going to mute the mic this time. But uh, I'll be back in a sec. All right, ah. I'm back. All right, uh, who we got now? Uh, Steven, Steven, old Stevie. What do I think about Steven? Uh, eh. MC's dad. I think he's well done. Hasn't done too much, but uh, for the for the role he plays, I think he's interesting. I think people want to know more about him, and so I, I think he's written in a way that kind of gets people intrigued. Ten out of ten, tasted women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's he's pretty good. He's pretty good. But I haven't really revealed too much about him yet. He's kind of a bad father, but you know we can't all be perfect. So yeah, yeah. Who would you give Stephen a well done? Ah, orange chair chick, aka Kelsey, prison guard in the prison route. She was. I liked her sex scene. I, I do. I thought her sex scene was pretty good. But oh yeah, she was a sadist before Aisha. I don't think she was good though. She's yeah, she was alright. Other than her sex scene, she didn't really do a whole lot. She's, she's just alright. She is, she is decent. Ah, Val Raven. Bird Knight. Or Raven Knight, depending on who you ask. Hmm. Hmm. We'll put him in perfect character. I'm pretty much perfectly happy with how Val, Raven, Val Raven's been introduced and how he's been progressed. His fight, I think, was one of the best in the game. Probably the best type of like one-on-one -on -one type fight, maybe. I don't know. One of the best in the game, if not the best. And uh, I think his lore is interesting. Like, uh, and I, I mean, like the myth that I took him from. 
like I think the original myth, it was a Danish or Welsh, he's from the myth, where if a crow drinks the heart blood of a child, he can it transforms into a knight or something. Something like that. It, it, they have to drink the heart blood of a child, and then they can become a knight. And uh, yeah, I like how I translated that into the game. As the, uh, what do you call it? Val Raven has the heart stealer. He's eating people's hearts, eating children, young people's hearts, ideally under 18 or 18. Yeah, the younger they are, the better. I think, yeah, yeah, that whole part, like that whole part of his introduction was, was really interesting. And I like the transformation that he has in his fight of becoming a knight and how that kind of shapes his character as a knight. Like he has the code of chivalry, even though he's like evil, but he has like he has the chivalric code, you know, that he st he stands by. I also like the way he speaks the uh, not old English, the Middle English. I think that's cool. That's interesting. Like I don't like it when media overdoes it. Like when they have all characters talking like that all the time. I like the way Elden Ring does it, where. Only the, like, the really old characters speak with that old English type thing. Like uh, Rani or like an Horaloo, you know, like the old characters. They speak with like the Middle English type dialogue. But like normal characters just speak with normal. And I like that about Val Revan as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like the relationship, how he's progressed a little bit with Sila as well. I think... I think Val Raven was overall, I, I can't really think of anything I'd like to do better with him. Well, mm, maybe his intro I'd be a little bit more detailed with. But other than that, I think he's generally just a really good character. His loyalty to his lord as well. I think he, he just has a lot of likable traits that make you, even though he's like, you know, opposed to the MC, he just makes you, he kind of likes you. He, he's like a respectable character. Even if, even if he's not a good guy, he's a respectable guy. Yeah. So yeah, one of my favorite characters so far. Sila. I think she's this as well. Why why wouldn't it? Yeah, there we go. Sila is I don't know. She's She turned out better than I thought she would, to be honest. Like I I didn't think she'd be she'd be as good as she is. But I don't know, there's something about her personality. I don't know, it's just, it's really, because she's dumb in ways of the human, but not, well, also in the ways of the monster, but she has a good deal of knowledge. She can process things pretty fast. Just the way, she's kind of autistic in a way. Like socially, she's really fucking retarded. But yeah, I, I think that it just makes her really endearing. Like, Sila is the, the, the most endearing character in the game, I think. It's, um, yeah, yeah. The, the, the way she treats the MC, I think, is quite entertaining as well. And every other character, really. And, and I think the, the love between her and, and her son is quite... It's also quite touching in a way. I think that, like, the stupid moments make the genuine moments feel better, I think. Yeah, Sal is definitely one of my favorite characters. She's a lovable type of dumb. Yeah, she's dumb but clever and is beautiful, just like my mother. Ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Really makes you want to break her out of the immaterial. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people want to do that. Who wins in a titty off, Sila or a Glaze? Who does win that? I think a Glaze might be bigger, but also because a Glaze is generally taller than Sila by quite a bit. So, yeah, I think Glay might be bigger. But proportionally, Silas might be bigger. I don't know. <laughs> that hug scene was fucking beautiful. I'm glad you think so. Glad you think so. Yeah, she can shape shift. That's true. You're right, Dom. Although, a Glay. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it, but uh, yeah. There's some interesting stuff going on with how a glade looks as well.
Did I want anything to say anything else about Sala? Nah, I think she's just all around good character. Just just better than I expected. It's one of the cases where it's not even that I did her perfect. It's just I did her in a way that I didn't even think I would. So it's kind of like better than perfect in a way because the way I had her in my head is worse than how she turned up on screen. So yeah, big fan of Sala. Anyway, Langdon, Jared's dad. Hasn't done a whole lot. I like it, his, uh, his speech to sin. I thought it, it was good. It was well done. He, as he is, stands right now, he was well done. Is he better than your own dad? I don't know. But yeah, but I liked his speech to sin. I liked his conversations with the MC. His powers are cool. They are cool. And his design is cool. Yeah. Got supreme clothes. <laughs> Langdon is better than Jared as a person, but not as effective as a character as Jared. True. For now. True. If he wasn't Jared's dad, I wouldn't even hate him. Yeah. I think there are likable aspects to Langdon. <laughs> ah, Oscar. Our boy Oscar. In the middle of uh, Amber Light. What do I think about him? Yeah. He's, he's well done. I don't know if I'd say he's amazing. No, he's, he's well done. Yeah, he's not better than Dell. He's not better than Dell. He's, no, he's, he's about as good as Danica. Let's, let's put Jess over here. He's about on par with Danica, I think. He's, he's a simple character. There's not a whole lot to do, but what he does do, he does effectively and efficiently. Like he plays his role in the story without excess, without like bloat. He just does his job, but then he leaves, which I, which I like. He's a very effective character. And I think he's a little bit of a sympathetic character as well. I think his memories were interesting and they were, they were good. They made, made you feel a little bit sorry for him. And I think his fight with Michael was just, it was, it was good. It was a good fight with Michael. Like, even though I had my reservations about it, I always thought it was cool. I always thought the Michael fight versus Oscar fight was cool. I just wasn't sure how other people would perceive it. But yeah, I think Oscar, the whole fight, like uh, having to evade his red light with like heat vision goggles or whatever it was, night vision goggles, and uh you know, the smoke bombs and the way Michael tackled Oscar and how Oscar progressed through his powers as well to eventually regain a bit of his skill and fight Michael head on. I think, I think it was good for a partially monstified superhuman. I think he's, it was done well. Ironically, as a human, he might have done better. But yeah, he did good. He did good. Maybe, I say that, but Maybe not. Maybe not. Nah, he probably wouldn't have. If he was a human, he just would have got sniped. That would have been at the end of it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Oscar was good. He was good for what he was. Amber Light was a legit jump scare. <laughs> like the way Michael fights the Daryl Kimura versus how Michael fights Oscar is a, a cool point. I agree. Would have kicked Mike's ass if he had that 73 skill still. Mmm, mmm, if he retained his human intelligence. Yeah. Oscar is such a good character, he made Michael better. I do think he made Michael a better character. Daryl is top of amazing, or the bottom of perfect. <laughs> Daryl, right, the next character on the list. For me, Daryl is perfect. Not to the degree these three are. But I think he's... I planned Daryl for a long time. And he is one of the more controversial characters of the game. Because pe some people don't like uh, what a cocky son of a bitch he was when uh, he initially turns on the MC. Due to Jack's powers and all that. He was one of the more controversial ones. But I think in terms of how he was written and how he was implemented in the story. I think he's about as good as it. About as good as any character gets. I, hmm, 
I like the way he starts off as the bro, as the guy you confide in when you're talking about your powers, you're researching your powers, you're learning about your powers. I like how he works into that. I like how he fits into that. To start off with. I also like how he was... Like, not turned against the MC. It's sort of like forced against the MC. Yeah, in the, in the Jake arc. I do think that arc was a little bit too clustered, and I think I should have separated Daryl a little bit, a little bit more. But overall, I, th- I do think that fight was good, and I like how it, you know, kind of brought to light his backstory with the MC and how the MC and him used to have their, I guess, rivalry would be the right word. Yeah, a lot of people also don't like uh, that he was such a cunt when the MC was a kid, so that's one another controversial point about him. But I think, even though his reasons weren't justified, they were understandable, and I think that's important. So I liked his backstory. But most of all, I liked how his character arc ended, basically. With the, the, you know, the final battle, the big battle with him as a monster. But the, like, even though I put Del as a separate character, Del is still part of Daryl. So I like so many different moving pieces of him, the Daryl clone. I like the Daryl clone a lot, actually. Like the uh, the guy that's with you through most of the uh, initial hero arc, I liked that character a lot, and I liked his progression a lot. So I'm kind of incorporating him into the main Daryl as well when I'm saying he's the perfect character. I think yeah, his conflict, he's in in a turmoil while he's trying to decide: Do I want to fuse back with Daryl? Do I want to remain separate? Can I even do it? I think it was quite it was quite good. I I really like how that turned out, and I like. The actual scene where he fuses the ending of that and Daryl, the real Daryl, returns. I think it was all done about as good as I could have done it. I don't think I could have done it better. Not with my current skill set, anyway. And the fight was epic and all that as well. So yeah, Daryl's kind of like a lot of characters in one. And I think every character has a good amount of meaning. Like Del, the Daryl clone, and the monster Daryl, and the Chimera. And the true Daryl. I think they all, they're all good characters and they all combine into the, the one Daryl character. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how Daryl turned out. In, in fact, I, I really couldn't be happier, actually. Daryl is cool even with his fucked up haircut, f- uh, fucked up future haircut. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it was cool he got that drip. Yeah, yeah. But kids are cunts. They are. Yeah, but there's some that are cunty, more cunty than others, and Daryl was probably on that side. Yeah, his future hair color was eleven out of ten. Yeah. Redemption arc was good, especially when they just laid out on the ground in the fire. Yeah, yeah. Daryl being a cunt as a kid honestly makes sense with his dad being the way he was. Yeah, kind of, kind of. He had a, he had a tough time, but you know, not everyone who has a tough time is a, a fucking asshole about it. And that's what I said before about uh, having characters that are. That do fucked up shit. That are, that's understandable why they do it. But at the same time, you still acknowledge that it's fucked up. You know? Daryl has the advantages of having multiple good characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope he doesn't get, uh, get fucked up like last time. Dude needs to make up the ass kicking he got before. I mean, it was a pretty good fight. Between, oh, you mean... Uh, uh, yeah, between MC and Daryl, it was a good fight. But if you're talking about... Uh, Evander and Devana, yeah, he, he kind of got fucked up. He's, he's not ready yet to be uh, combat it, combating proper foes. Is the MC up? Yep. Uh, next? Yep. MC up next. Dark hard to see. Yeah, it's in. It's in. Daryl is so good that pieces of his characters are all good too. I generally agree. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. First time chat. Dan is the man. Glad I found your game. Love the characters. It made me even more invested in the game in general. Can't wait to see where you take the game in the future. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I like how the fake gem represents Clone Daryl. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, looks like Heavy Armor MC. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is the next scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get that. Daryl doesn't have a good win-loss ratio. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Has he, has he won any fights? I mean, Clone Daryl beat Dell, <laughs> so there's that. He lost to MC. 
Lost to the Twins. Has he been in any other fights? I can't think of any. No, I think that's it. Yeah, he's 2-1. Uh, to one. Not too good. Daryl arguably won the hideout fight versus MC. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah kind of. And so his loss sort ratio is not too bad. It's a draw with the MC. He beats Dell, which is himself, so. <laughs> and also, uh, he loses to MC in the, in the rematch. And loses to the Twins. All right. All right. So it's two to one and one draw. MC. I already talked about this a bit, but in my opinion, he's the perfect character. In fact, I might even say he's better than Ella. I really, I really, I really like how I implemented him. I think he's he's pretty much perfect. I talked about it a bit a bit before, but my idea of a good main character in a visual novel type game where you name the character and you're supposed to be the character is to pro is to provide a certain level of immersion while also having a certain level of character that's that can progress and keep people invested. Like a, uh, like the the way the MC is designed is, I think pretty much as perfect as I can manage it. I I I, I can't do any better to be honest. I I don't know how. The I like the way he's he's not emotionless, but he's very detached from most things. Because you can't have a character that's supposed to be the player feel too many emotions. Because if the player doesn't feel them, it's going to take him out of the immersion. Like if the MC is saying, oh, I'm so sad this happened, but the player isn't sad that it happened, it kind of like breaks, breaks that uh, immersion. It's, 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 uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but uh, yeah. I, li I like how detached the MC is, just to the right degree. And I also like how the game explains that detachment as well. Like, uh, how, like his character expansion with Liz and the uh, flashback of uh, him and her. And also just the way he acts generally throughout the game. I think it's about as good as I can, as I can manage at the moment. Uh, MC perfect. M MC cannot be anything other than the top of perfect. Yeah. He tied MC. Yeah. Lost to Michael in the sim. Oh yeah, he did lose to Michael. Yeah, yeah, true. S tier definitely. MC supremacy. The amount of choices you get to make it, you get to make it hard to put anywhere else. Yeah, and that's also I think that I think it's important. If you're gonna make the MC feel emotions, then it has to be emotions that the player chooses. I think that's very important. MC needs his own tier for how <laughs> that's how good he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we get a sex scene with some random girl? Sucks MC's pecs as a dude. Not gonna lie, he deserves to get nipple licked. He's a cool guy. I would invite him to a barbecue. Chad Brazilian, one not the hot dog USA one. He's a king. I don't, I don't know about that, mate. Licking the pecs. Uh, I guess Japanese porn does a bit of that. I don't don't see it a whole lot. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Girl sucking a guy's pecs is weird. That was a bit weird. It has been so, so long since I've had, since I've seen such a good main character. This is the best I've seen in a visual novel self insert character written. I might never be able to write my self insert as well as the MC because I usually treat mine as his own character rather than self insert as I develop him. Well, thanks for that. That's kind of you to say. You're making a game uh, size 922? What's your game? We'll, we'll we'll have a bit we'll have a look, but uh, yeah, um, I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. I think he's 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 well balanced. That's what I'll say about him. All right, Nix, good old Nix. What do we think about her? She is well done. Next, to Alexis. I think her law is cool. Her design is really cool, the, the, like the goth mum type design. Her powers are really cool, and her place in the story is 
very integral and quite interesting. I, I like her a lot. Her personality is just generally pretty fun as well. But yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about it. She hasn't done a whole lot. She had a bit of time in the memory sequence. And of course she killed Ella, so that's quite important. But uh, other than that, we haven't gone too deep into her character as of yet. Wonder how many games Superhuman will inspire in the future? Nick's Supremacy? I don't know. It'd be cool if they did. I don't know if I don't know if it's going to get big enough to inspire many people. But yeah, I'd, I'd like it if uh, like if it did. Bro, Ella is alive. <laughs> well, you never know. Still need to finish the gallery. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you get around to it. Bro, are these people bots? Who is there bots? I don't see any bots. Ah, oh, if you're asking who I'm talking to. Talking to the Twitch chat as well. Gopika. I don't know. Uh, I don't see any bots. I wish I knew how to bot. I'd bot the shit out of my stuff. <laughs> just uh, to make myself look better. <laughs> but no, no, it's all just normal people. As far as I can tell, anyway. Uh, all right. Do I have anything else to say, Vandex? Nah, I think she's just all around a well done character. Got a lot of characters in well done. I've got a lot of characters in decent as well. That's fair. Ah, Met. Met, a new character. The newish character. Been in a few updates now. Hmm. What do I think about Met? He's good. I like him. I think most people like him. He's. about as good as Shen, I think, at the moment. He's well done. Yeah, he hasn't done enough to warrant an amazing, but I think generally his personality, as in the uh, kind of a carefree, kind of happier version of Michael. Yeah, he's a bro. He's a bro, the kind of guy you want to go to a club with. I agree, yeah. He, he, he needs some more time to cook a bit. Needs a bit more time in the oven. But uh, as he is right now, I, I'm, I'm happy with how I've done him. I think his fight was cool. He's two fights. Uh, I think both of them were pretty good. Uh, I think his powers are interesting. And I think where he got his powers from is a good contrast to Michael. A, li a little look at how uh, what Michael could have been if he had chose differently. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how uh, Met turned out. Oh, I also like that he's, uh, he's kind of in the same position as the MC, since he got, uh, got changed a little bit before the MC did, like uh, around the start of the year. Oh, like uh, maybe a month or two before the MC, around then, I can't remember. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I like that his role in comparison to that, and how he's kind of like a measuring stick for the MC, of how uh, the MC is progressing compared to what was probably like pinnacle warrior of humanity. Like, the top of humanity can reach this high. Can the MC match that? Well, we haven't really seen so far, because the MC hasn't fought him. But I think he's I think he's good. He, he, he has a good role. Simple but fun powers, yeah, yeah. Ah, Bernie, old Ber Bernard, Bernhardt, however you want to say it. Uh, what do I think about the Bernster? Hmm, uh, it's hard to say. He's I think he's. A I think he's amazing. I like him. Even though his role in the story so far is limited, I don't think I'd change anything I've done with him at all, to be honest. I think his powers are very interesting. We haven't really gone too deep into them. But I, I like his powers a lot. And I, I like his attitude, I like his role in Hero on the council, as a contrast to Malik's role. I think both are pretty good. Maybe I'm rating him a bit prematurely because of what I know he's going to do in the future. 
because I understand his character a little bit differently to you guys. But I think... Uh, but what, is he amazing? No, nah, he is. He is. I like his role. His role is the strongest superhuman, or one of the strongest superhumans. I think all around he's just, he's just done really well. I think his fight with Aisheth was really cool. The one fight he had. I think his introduction was really cool. I think just all around, he's about as good as I could have made him at the moment. He should be more on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I hate his personality, but in a weird way, because I understand a lot of what he's saying about his methods, and I agree with most of them. Except I hate it, and myself for it. All in all, great character. Yeah, yeah, he's an interesting one. I'm not sure if I... No, nah, we'll put him with Dexter. We'll put him with Dexter. He hasn't, he hasn't had enough time to fully... to fully uh, flesh himself out. But I do think he's a good character. Pretty... I, I don't know if I'd change anything about him. In fact, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. Uh, Jill Pyre. Lieutenant of Team Reaper. Hmm. Uh, she's kind of boring. Kind of a coward. But, you know, with the Nyx, she feels safe to fight. But, uh, yeah, overall, she's only been seen once. She yeah, did a little bit of combat against Ella, but didn't do too much, you know. Level 4. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's just boring. She's just boring. Emily. Hmm. Emily. We get to some of the main girls now. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, where, where do I want to put Emily? Hmm. L let me think this through a bit. Her introduction. She was the first girl introdu introduced, actually. Yeah, yeah, her and, uh, well, Shadow, I guess, was the really first. But, uh, yeah, her, her and Shadow. Yeah. I like her design, I'll say that to start off with. I think uh, her initial design wasn't amazing, but her redesign, I think, is really good. Like, it's one of my favourites still, even though she was one of the first characters I did redesign. And even still, I think she's one of the best. In fact, I've, I think I've redesigned her a couple of times. Yeah, and I think the, the one, how she looks now in this picture, I think is really good. I'm really happy with it. So we'll start off with that. Uh, her side route was good. One of the better side routes I did back in the old college days. Like, uh, what do you call it? With the, uh, like the goal to make her stronger, like to improve her self-esteem herself, like the way she viewed herself. Like, it, her ability to hold herself strong and stand tall kind of thing. I like that. It's not like the typical, like, physical strength stronger, you know. But uh, although she does do a bit of that too, learning to fight. I appreciate Emily in that regard. I think her story with her dad... Hmm. Could be better. But I also think it, it did quite a good enough job. Like... The way I designed her dad was to be a real scumbag. Well, I don't know if I portrayed that properly enough, though. I don't, I don't think I even put Tom on the list. No, too late. Yeah, Tom could have been done better. But I, I overall liked the, the whole quest structure of getting her money back and all that. I think that was good. But most of all, what I liked most of all about Emily was I liked her, the ending of her side route. Like, the start was good. The middle was alright, but the, I think the ending was really good. With like uh, how she goes into the concert and does her thing with Emily, uh, with uh, Christy and Ella. I thought that was a really good scene. And I liked the after party afterwards as well. I think that was a good sex scene, a good fun scene with the three. I think it was good. Well, I think it, her side route probably ended the best out of all the side routes I did. Had the best ending, even if it's not necessarily the best side route. Or one of the best endings. Well, yeah, I'd say it's the best. So I like that. I also like how she's slowly been integrated into the main story. With her search for Ella. Like her and Christy searching for Ella. Trying to find out anything they can about her. And I like her relation. Because Ella is like a, a core character of the story. And her, I like 
her relationship to that. I think it's good. I'd say she's amazing. I like her a lot. One of one of my favorite. No, not one of my favorite characters. Well, one of my favorite characters. I like her. All right, what do you guys? Uh, Emily is really good. Why? Well done. Perfect. She's amazing. Perfect. Hmm. Be perfect, yeah. Please shout her first. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think Emily suffers a bit because of the university scenes. Other side routes are all somewhat more appealing and more story relevant. So I usually find myself doing Emily's side route during the time loop. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Is Emily mentally strong enough yet to be superhuman? Who knows? I loved how Emily developed from going from the pushover, people pleaser, to stand up for herself and the one she cares about for was amazing. Oh, glad you think so. That's what I was going for. Will ignoring Emily's content impact her? I'm not even sure if I'm going to let that be optional anymore. When I uh, go back and go over the game, that might not that might not even be optional, because she is a core part of the story. The world needs more goth, goth girl foursomes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good take. Emily's also thick. Yeah, she is one of the thicker. She's got a she's got rolls, you know, not not too much, but you know, it's there. A bit of meat, you know. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, Beats hasn't really done a whole lot. Hmm, he's decent. He's better than this prison guard. Maybe. Same tier as Langdon? Nah, I don't think so. Beats is boring? Nah, I think he's, he's alright. He has his role, and he's you know, head of the Aldeans, so that's interesting. He's got the backstory benefiting him. Like, uh, the already established Mafia arc. I think that helps him a bit, even though he hasn't been in the story much. And then there was his flashback with Klaus as well. I think overall he's alright. Langdon is much better. I agree. Literally just Klaus is dead at this point. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Alright. Need to go back and look at Langdon scene, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Bro, when will our MC be able to withstand the current shot? Who knows? He has to work on it. If he even can. Elijah. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So far for what he is, he's well done. He's not as good as Langdon. But I like... He's kind of like Clark in essence. But he's much more to the extreme than Clark. I think people like Clark a, lo a lot more because Clark is understandably good. He's reasonably good. Elijah, on the other hand, is a little bit unreasonable. And I like that. I like that. I like that he goes a bit more to the extreme of goodness as compared to Clark or Malik. I appreciate that. I also like the way his character changes based on your choices in the game. If you're a good guy, then he's a good guy to you. If you're a bad guy, then he hates you. I like that. I appreciate that. So I think he's pretty well done. In fact, is he as good as Langdon? Nah, we'll just leave him as is. Uh, it's time for boy mode. Love Elijah. See if he bounces. <laughs> yeah. I ended up coming around to him, enjoying him. Oh, interesting. I like that he's dumb, pure hero type. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like that. Elijah is Clark, but Clark is depressed realist. Yeah, kind of, kind of. He is a bit. Clark balances morality and what he needs to do. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a bit more balanced. But I like the extreme that Elijah represents. Elijah tries to shove the good down your throat. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people don't like him. But uh, yeah, that makes him interesting to me. Like, it's not bad if a character is disliked. I, I, I don't mind that. I mean, in fact, sometimes that's what I want. Elijah is uh, the hero who refuses to kill an innocent, so a continent dies. But it's an uh, anime, so the actual continent doesn't die. I assume that's what you meant, Dom. And yeah, yeah, he is that kind of character. Yeah, The annoying, lawful, good hero archetype fits well in the story, 
for now. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Some people are looking at the next one, Claudia. Yeah. Elijah literally call had to call her daddy. <laughs> yeah. There's a spectrum of Elijah to Clark, and Malik is in the middle of it, I think. Mm, no. I think m there'd be a spectrum between Elijah and Malik, and Clark would be in the middle of that. All right. Claudia. Old Claudia. First off, I like the name. I've always liked the name Claudia, and uh, I think it suits so well. <laughs> Wife to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Better than Tiffany fight me? Mm, mm, what do I think about Claudia? She's... She's well done. She's around Nick's Alexis level. Hasn't had too much time to shine. But I think her dream sequence actually made her a much more interesting character to a lot of people. Also, I like her general attitude. Very good character, very wholesome character. Another, one of the few... Are there any other virgins in this game? Is that a thing? Oh, Tiffany was a virgin. Right, right. You're one of the few characters who, uh, you know, kept her virginity. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, yeah, Mia. Yeah, no, there's, there's a few. There's a few. Yeah, I uh, I liked her dream sequence quite a lot. The whole uh, future scene of the two of them getting married. I think the sex scene was great, by the way. I also like her redesign. I think her redesign was one, is one of the best up there with Emily. Like compared to how she used to look, which I didn't mind, but I think her new design is especially good. And so uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Is Jake a version? Yeah, he's a dude though. He doesn't count. <laughs> So, yeah, Claudia overall, well done. Kind of a, just a really wholesome character. Yeah. Which you don't see a lot in my game. Uh, ah, the sixth. There's a bit more screen time than the fifth. A bit more. But he's, he doesn't do too much. He's decent. Decent. I really like his design compared to a lot of the other apostles. You guys can't really see much of it. You only see like the top, even not even the whole top half. But uh, his designs, uh, I quite like. I quite like. You'll see eventually. Grandpa, yeah, yeah. He's just, he's good. He's about as good as the third. Shows up a bit less than the third. But he's, he's, he's all right. Hmm. Why do you call sixth ether rather than something similar to space? Uh, do I want to answer that? Hmm. Mm. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer. It's not particularly significant. I'll just say that. Lucy. Lucy. Uh, what do we think about Lucy? Lucy was... Yeah. Yeah. She's decent. She doesn't do a whole lot. Mainly on the NTR route. But even on the NTR route, she doesn't do a lot. Kind of tries to seduce the MC a little bit. So there's that. And she has her whole thing with uh, her reasons for... Oh, shit, I forgot to put Long on here. Fuck me. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, her, her reason, like, it, it's a pretty simple reason. She's got a daughter that she wants to look out for, and the pay is good, so she does what she does. Nothing s super exceptional about it, but decent enough. She gives you a hand job. She can't be too bad. <laughs> Oh, Shocko is in here. That's probably for the best, really. I shouldn't put Shocko in on here. Deus probably shouldn't be here either, actually. 
Damn. No. Uh, hmm. Fairy. Or as he's also known. Well, I won't say. But the fairy. How's the fairy looking? Hasn't done too much. Had a good introduction with Alice. That was good. It has a, a brief showing since then. Not too much. We're going to put him in decent. He's yeah, all right. He's all right. Does his job. Leaves. And we'll have to see if he returns or not. In fact, it's hard to be chill or even happy in a world where you get chopped in half. Then after agonizing pain, you get fine one week slash month later. Not going to lie. I like the realistic nihilism of most characters from Superhuman. Because it's definitely hard to see good when you need to kill people and do painful shit to survive. Lol. True. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a harsh world, to be sure. Very basically saved Alice, body Klaus, and then fucked off. Yeah, that's his. Mom said her nickname, said the nickname of his name. She did. Uh, yeah, Sigma. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't Val Raven comment about him a bit? Yeah, comments about him. Was Superhuman inspired by Parasite Eve? Because there's a lot of similarities. Heck, even protagonist is basically Brianna? No, uh, I don't know if I've ever played Parasite Eve. Is that a game or a show or what? I've heard of it, but I, I don't remember. Is it okay to ask questions on Patreon exclusives like character profiles? You can ask questions. Oh, of course you can ask questions. Won't necessarily answer it. Right, let's get on with it. Rena. Rena. Hmm. She is. She's decent. Oh, well done, I should say. I like it. I, she's not as good as Met, not as interesting as Met. But her whole, her whole connection to the Aldanes, I think, sets her up for a lot of good stuff. And so her, her role in the story is, is pretty good. I also like her personality, generally. I think she's kind of fun. Yeah. Not as good as Elijah either, but I'd say she's she's good about here. She's good. She's good. I like characters that can be antagonistic without being evil. Yeah, true. I, I like that as well. Just because the person's on the other side doesn't mean he's he's evil. Gilf scene? I don't know if she's a gilf. Maybe she could be in a, the near future. Is she a grandma? It's a horror game about policewomen trying to deal with supernatural bullshit and find out why some people turned into monsters. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard of it, and that sounds familiar, but it's not based on it. She's only like 50? Yeah. Alright, Christy. Christy. Hmm. What do I think about Christy? I've got plans for Christy. But, as she is now... What do I think about it? She is Ah, she, she's well done. She's well done. She's well done. I like her. She's not amazing. She hasn't had time to be amazing yet. But as she stands right now, she's a, a well done character. I think I've implemented her pretty well. Like her, her, uh, her role as the kind of investigator of Ella to try and figure out what's going on with that whole situation. I think it's good. I think it's interesting. Um, her whole uh, attitude, the calling your boyfriend kind of stuff. I think that's a fun gimmick. I don't know if it overplays its welcome, but I think it's fun for its time. And I don't, I don't play into it too much these days. It was fun while it lasted. And I like her attachment to Ella, because she's probably the closest to Ella out of anyone in the game. So I like, I like her role. And I like what she's shaping up to be. I've liked how I've presented her so far. Christy is low amazing, not gonna lie. No, oh, you think so? Below Emily, right? Yeah. Good. Christy is amazing. Christy is really good. Fuck. <laughs> I love playing into her boyfriend roleplay. Yeah, yeah. 
Christy is not even close to amazing. Mm, mm. Some differing opinions in the chat here. Well done. Her character is a bit bland, but she helps other characters progress. I think, I don't know if I call it bland, but I do think she helps characters progress. Christy needs to get infected by a sex monster. Mm, mm. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. That's, that's funny, though. Also, is Bernhard's wife a superhuman or just a normal person? You just have to play and figure it out. Your mother had you for Govan, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. This is more of that fight going on. The one coming now hasn't appeared much in the game. Mia? Mm -hmm. She appears a bit. Uh, well, let's read YouTube. Clone Dole and the best bro. Yeah. Bro, when will our MC be able to withstand... Oh, bro, will this update be your best and last update? It's not going to be the last, if it's the best. I don't know. It could be. I don't know if it will be, but it could be. It just depends on how I do it. If I do a good job or not. Uh, could you share what the de deal was with the other monster that got James? Why could it talk? It was a Minyak, right? It was a Minyak. That's for why I can talk. Some monsters can squeeze out a few words. It's, it's not that monsters can't speak. It's just that most of them don't learn. That's all it is. The one that got James was... Uh, he was the... Well, she was the one that uh, was captured by a hero and eventually got released. Or well, one of the ones that did that. And so learned a bit of, uh, bit of uh, the modern language. And it, I say that, but even if they learn the modern language, they're not necessarily very good at it, you know, the human language. If only the monster had an education system, they could talk uh, to a degree. They're intelligent, but their minds, they don't think the way humans do. And so it'd be difficult for them to communicate the way that humans do. For most monsters, even if they knew the language, even, and even if they are smart. Uh, it's like, why do grad students not learn a second language? Yeah, yeah. The Minyaks we fought could also talk, if barely. Could they? I can't remember. Probably, to a degree. Although I can't remember if that was like a mental conversation, because that's a bit different. All right. Mia. Mia. She is... Well done. I... I like Mia. I think the gimmick where she shouts suddenly for no apparent reason is pretty funny. I like that. It's quite endearing. I think she's kind of cute. Kind of wholesome. And she supports Jake's character. Like, she builds up Jake's character quite well. I like... Like, yeah. Jake is better as a villain because Mia was there as a character supporting her. Supporting him. So, yeah, I, I do appreciate that. Doesn't do too much on her own, separate from Jake. But she does enough that I think she's, she's good enough. Yeah, not too much more to say about her. She'll, she'll get a bit more in the future. But as she stands now, I think she's she's pretty well done. Nathan. Hmm. Hmm. The real Nathan, the fake Nathan. AKA MC. Uh he's He's decent. He's alright. He's kinda of like the family man. He, he he does what he does for money to support his family, to support his daughters. I had been meaning to show another little scene of him, but I didn't get around to doing it, so I kind of missed my shot. But uh, overall, there are th some things I would change, but I think he's pretty decent. He's alright. Wang, aka Suicide Wang. He's decent. I'd say he's above Alpha Breaker. <laughs> he's perfect, there's no faults with the character. He's funny. Um, no, actually, yeah, I agree. He is funny. He's well done. He's, uh, he has a good personality because he's funny, for one. But also, I think his backstory, when you get the chance to kill him, was kind of interesting as well. It's not the most amazing thing. I just kind of threw it together, kind of short notice. 
but I think he, he turned out pretty well. And I, I like the choice, like that you can kill him, put him out of his misery, or you can just let him do as he wants. Both Wang and Christy are getting shafted. <laughs> w sounds for Wang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh crap, I should actually watch Wang's backstory. Yeah, see if you like it or not. Real, I killed him because what the fuck, but got sad too. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of fucked up, but he has, he has his reasons, like everyone. Doesn't excuse him, but you know. Well done. <laughs> now that was cruel, friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's alright as this. He's he's well done. I don't think he plays enough of a role to do much more than that. Now Alice. Fan favorite, obviously. Most people put Alice at the top of their waifu. Like waifu tier lift. Hmm. Yeah. Alice is S tier. Love that mass murder. Alice is perfect. Tits are too great <laughs> to be anything else. Alice is absolute perfection. End of discussion. Top, obviously. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What do I think about Alice? She is a perfect character, I think. I like... Well, to start with... Alice was one of the first characters I wrote and one of the first characters I designed. Had her, had her in my mind very early on. Very early on. In fact, she might have been designed before Ella. But no, 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 that's not true. Ella was designed first. But Alice was uh, next, I think. And I'm really, really happy with how that turned out, even now. Even now, after all the art updates, I'm still happy with the initial design I did of Alice. So there's that. So we'll get that out of the way. Great design. Personality-wise, I like her. I like her a lot. She's a cold character in a way, but not quite cold like Tiffany is cold. She's a very aggressively cold. Like, she's got a lot of anger in her. But it's not necessary, necessarily anger at the MC. That's why I wouldn't say, like, she's... She doesn't fall into like the Sundere variation category, or whatever. Because her anger is never really directed at the MC, because the MC hasn't really done anything to her. She's mostly neutral from the start to the MC. But there's a lot of anger in her character, and I like that quite a lot. Other than that, I like the moments in which I depict her vulnerability. The talk at the lake about her mother, and about the MC's role in her life, I thought was quite well done. Very well done, actually. And the, what do you call it? The talk she had with her during like the training area, and just before you first encounter Danica and Klaus. I think the conversations you have there are quite good. And her motivations are overall pretty good. She's... The arc she was introduced in, the Mafia arc, is still one of my favourite to date. Like, Klaus was a good villain, she was a good, like, opposition to him. And the MC fit in a little awkwardly, but I still, I still like it. I like the way she fights, I like her powers. Overall, I just think she's a very compelling character. But, I will say, there are some problems that I would change. One is, I think her hiring the MC to work for her was a little premature. A little bit, uh... It doesn't quite make sense that she's... Well, it kind of does, because she sees how powerful of a fighter he is. But even then, I still think it's a little bit unreasonable that she'd just hire this guy, because he, she sees she's a strong fighter. I think that's a flaw in her, her initial introduction. So that's one thing. Uh, was there anything else? There was, I'm pretty sure there's another thing. I can't remember. But, yeah. yeah. I also like that, even though she's quite a hard character, the softer moments are quite soft. And I appreciate that. The contrast there. Yeah. Alice, I hope I do her justice in the future. I've got a lot of plans for her. But the plans I have are quite complicated. 
So hopefully I, I do it properly when her time comes around. Hopefully. But we'll see. We'll see. As of right now, I think she's easily in the perfect character, character category. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, everyone's saying perfect, perfect. Boobs too big. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, yeah. She's wholesome girlfriend. Sometimes, yeah. Alice is the best looking of the old designs. I agree. I agree she's, she's the best looking. More like Kudere, I guess. Yeah, but even then, her Kudere doesn't quite fit her quite well because she does have that rage in her, just not towards the main character. Talking with her dad is always nice. True, and I do like the interactions, the flashback between her and her dad, both during her death, I guess you could say, her death scene, and also in her second evolution scene. Uh, I think both were good. Both were interesting. Yeah. I think her, her development is good as a character. I love Alice's soft, intimate side. Yeah, She deserves love and happiness. Yeah, I wonder if she'll get it or not. Still wish Klaus' joint choice was, wasn't scrapped. Yeah, it's too much work. Can't be stuffed. Yeah, the contrast is 10 out of 10. Yeah, I think so. As long as we get Alice's wife ending, I'm happy. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Not a problem with her booba size. You just need to suck her tits till she falls a few cup sizes. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? She might have the strongest development. Mm, maybe, maybe. The thing is, you just gotta wonder how you go from here, that's all. Bro, can you make a game like Eternum? I'm asking because that's a really good game. It is a really good game. If I can make it... No, no, I can't. He... I don't... What's the name of the guy developing Eternum? I forget his name. I'm in his Discord. I haven't commented there, I've just, I've just joined it. I've got, I've got his name though. Uh... Cardi B, that's right. Yeah, he's an excellent writer. I really do appreciate it. Like, uh, the things he does is very different to Superhuman. It's, uh, I guess, what's the right word? Flair is the right word. He has an accept, a really good eye for flair that really makes the characters pop that I, that I like a lot. Like, each of the characters in the tournament. I still haven't finished Once Upon a Time. Maybe I'll it. Is that what it's called? Uh, I forget. I'll get around to it. But uh, yeah, each of his characters really pop. Like all the characters in Internum, really, they're very memorable to me. And I think he's it's not even just a writing thing, it's a, a presentation thing, the way he presents them in the visual novels. It's very, it's very hard to do the way he does it. And I, I don't think I can, to be honest. My, the way my writing style is, is a, is a little bit different. It's, a, it's not quite as well suited to Once in a Lifetime, that's right. Is, is, that, is that the name? Yeah, it is. Once in a lifetime. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's not something that you can just do. It either takes you know a lot of practice, or you've just got the you've got just got the magic touch and you can do it. I like Eternum, but I strangely didn't like the MMO bits, but love the real life sense. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people don't get as invested in things that aren't necessarily connected to the real world, like for. Example, my, the memory section of my game, the, you know, the most recent update. A lot of people couldn't get as attached to what's happening in the memory section because they know fundamentally that it's not real. It's not what's happening in real life. Even though the characters are kind of like taken from real life, their consciousness, and you are talking to real characters, it's still not, it's still not real life. And so I think a lot of people feel difficulty attaching themselves to that. And so I, I'm not surprised that some people feel the same way about the MMO aspect of Eternum. I prefer your writing style, but he's really good at more usual VN writing. I don't even know if it's usual. I've never seen a visual novel do it quite like he does. But I'm assuming it's a he. Maybe it's a chick. I don't know. Cardi sounds like a chick name. but <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's different for sure. But yeah, if, if you like mine... Better, you know, glad to have you. Glad to have you along. Although, there's no reason you can't play both. <laughs> I just assume it was a shared dream sequence. Yeah, it is. Even if <laughs> it is a shared dream sequence. But the fact that it's not happening in the real world, I think, puts people off a little bit. And that's the same with the term. They're all real characters in the term. It's just that, you know, it's not in the real world. That's all. 
Will you ever make a game with any RPG combat or just story-based? Uh, I was thinking a while back. I was thinking maybe make... I don't know if you, you guys play games like Halls of Torment, Vampire Survivors. I was thinking about making a game a little bit like that. But, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. I don't know. Because I reckon I could get some good lore doing a game like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It would take too much time. It's probably not going to happen. Love your game. It's one of my favorites. I was waiting for the update because it was a very long ending. Greetings from Yucador. Ecuador. Oh, thanks, mate. Anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, yeah, Alice, perfect character. Not actually perfect, but, you know, she's up there. Lori. Lori. Hmm. Hmm. Lori is... Hmm. 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 Her design is all right. She's got the superhuman uniform on. She gets the, the bikini and the armor later. That's true. But uh, her facial design is good. I like it. Her body design is average. Reasonable sized tits. So that's, that's, a, that's a change. So there's that. I think... She's... Well done. Maybe somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. Her place in the story, while not super significant, I think it's it suited the arc very well. She did her job very well, a lot like Oscar, actually. That's that's uh, what I'll say. She, uh, where, where did I put Oscar? Yeah, he's over there. Yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, we'll put her next to Del. She had her story. She had her arc with the you know, she uh, her partner died, and she made a new partner with Del. And, uh, you know, they kind of bonded a bit, and that kind of all climaxed into the part where she fights alongside Alice to take down Daryl's chimeras and how she challenges Del as well. I think it was all done quite well, and she fit into that arc really good. She enhanced the arc, I'll say. And that means she did her job good. So I think she was, she was pretty well done. And after she did her job, she kind of... They did into the background because she's done all she needed to. Her arc concluded. She got the, no, redemption is the right word, the climax. The, she reached the end of her arc, basically. And I think, I think it was a good arc. Her powers are also cool. Laurie's low amazing. Mm -hmm. Laurie's well done. Also, the bikini beach and armor dungeon were great. Looked so good. <laughs> I do like her crystal armor as well, actually. We need more D&D &D with Laurie. <laughs> yeah. Made me care for Laurie. I think that makes her a good character. I also love her powers. Yep. She has a good history, but need more development. Yeah, I think, I think her development is cut short at the right time. But yeah. She's good. She's good. Klaus. Ooh. Villain of one of the bigger arcs in my game. Hmm. Hmm. Clark. Oh, it's not Clark. Klaus. He was a good villain. He was a good villain. Is he better than Danica? Yeah, he's better. He's better than his uh, allies. He... Amazing? Is he amazing? Is he amazing? Put him at the bottom of amazing. I think he was a really good villain. His relationship with Alice and Michael were cool. I like. I had. I think I had just the right amount of depth with that backstory. I didn't go too far. I didn't like explain his whole fucking life and everything. I think I just had the right amount included in two separate scenes. I like that he started off as a, a weak kid, and how that his self consciousness about his weakness kind of perverted his adult life into becoming the kind of power obsessed arsehole that he ended up becoming I, I like that I like that kind of like a twist on a character I think his powers are cool like he's the first one with really like explosive type powers like really like high fantasy type powers I think that that, that was pretty cool 
And I think, well, above all, his final fight scene was really good. The MC going second evolution, him monstifying. The little uh, tips and tricks that you had to go to reach him. Mm. Like, get him to that point. I think he was all pretty good. Pretty, pretty happy with how Klaus turned out. I wouldn't change... I don't think I'd change anything about him, really. I can't really think of anything. Yeah. He's basically... Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a good character. Ah. The, uh... Is he, is he is he the ninth or the tenth? Is the tenth or the ninth? I forget. I always get them mixed up. Uh, the tenth. Yeah, he's the tenth. What do I think about him? Oh, did I already do the ninth? Or did I not include him? No, oh, no, he's here. Yeah, he's fine. Right, the tenth. Uh, he's alright. He's he does his job. He's a scary monster dude. There's not much more to say. Well, there's not there's not a whole lot to say about him. You don't really get to see much of his body. His body is, is a weird one compared to the other the other ones. So uh, you you get a small little look at see at that. Jared. Everyone's favorite character, most beloved character in Superhuman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. Jared and shit and piss baby tear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The perfect asshole. Hmm. What do I think about Jared? Jared Redemption Arc takes him to 10 out of 10. <laughs> Jared. Not as likable as his father, but he's a more effective character, I think. He's good. He's well done. He's he serves as a very good but hateable villain. Get him off my screen, Tia. <laughs> yeah, he's he's the typical jock asshole that you see in all those teen love, uh, cop, what do you call, love comedy, high school movies. He's that asshole, just turned up a little bit. And given a lot of power. So he's kind of designed to be a bit of a prick. And I think he serves that design pretty damn well. So, yeah. I like his new design. Yeah, me too. Me too. The, one of the problems I have was now that he's got a new design, I kind of said in the story that the new design was because of his evolution. I kind of implied that a little bit. But when I go back to redesign the whole game, well, not the whole game, parts parts of the game. Am I going to give, look, make him look like this, or am I going to have to keep him different? Because he's like, he hasn't evolved yet. Like, he hasn't become a superhuman yet. So that, that's one of the troubles I have with redesign. I'm not sure. Think you should shrink his neck a bit? Nah, he's buff, man. He's got a big neck. He's got, it's a chunky fuck. Jared became, after redesign, became a Giga Jared? Yeah, yeah. Jared post Evo is thick? He is thick. Lucius. My boy, Lucius. I'll say this. He's one of my favorite characters. But the reason for that isn't in the game yet, so we're going to rate him differently. Lucius, as he stands, he's a funny guy, but we haven't seen a whole lot of him. He's probably in the world well tier. We haven't seen enough of him of, to, do, to do anything. He's, the, the only thing he's got going for him is he's funny, and he's a, a powerful captain. That, that, that's it. <laughs> that's all there really is to say about him. Like he, he's not even as good as Elijah. Yeah. He's one of my favorite characters, but as he stands, he, he's, only in, he's only in well done. He hasn't done enough. He's, he, he needs some more time. Is one self fucker? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took too seriously. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Quite <laughs> decent, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. I love how he's both a one man army and probably a one man orgy. <laughs> Would I ever do a scene with Lucius? Would that ever happen? I feel tempted to, but then I, I don't know if I can stomach drawing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Could you explain what MC means after he unlocks Laurie's memories and says he can feel his powers shrink back from the face of Jake's as though it recognizes it's of a higher order? Does it mean like that per unit of power Jake is stronger or it has an easier time facing other powers? Mm, do I want to explain that? It's not really a super huge deal. Uh... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain it. There's some meaning to it. And it will be you know gone into in the future. Like half the characters uh haven't done enough. Still going to make be making this game for another five years. I don't know. It's ninety eight percent done. So how much could I really be developing these characters? You know? I mean that is what I'm on, nine point eight, right? 0 0.9, 0 0.98. That's uh, that's the number my patches are on. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of these characters need a bit more, need a bit more time in the sun before I can properly rate them. Yeah, yeah. Also, is Lucius' daughter is a superhuman or human? If she was a born when he was still human, wouldn't she be like eighty five plus years old? Well, one day he saw a miniac said beautiful. <laughs> well, Lucius himself is an 85, so I don't know where you got that number from. But uh, you'll meet her in game. You'll meet her in game. She will show up. No, I'm not going to say soon, but she'll show up. All right, ninth. He is here. Truth. Just another character that has not done shit. There's not really much to say. All these characters could be inter uh, interchangeable. But, uh, yeah. Haven't done a whole lot. Lots of apostles just hanging around. Yeah, I mean, what, do, what can you do? What? Combat is a little finicky template as a solo team, in my eye. Could slow the development. Yeah, true. If I did do, like, a proper combat game, I'd, I'd try and put together a team. I wouldn't do it by myself. That said, I don't know if I can be bothered, so it might never happen. Probably won't. I don't know. Add much more fight scene will be appreciated. <laughs> I'm already adding a lot, man. I don't know if I can do much more than I'm doing. If superhumans can't have children, how, how come they can get monsters pregnant? Monsters, certain types of monsters, are able to incorporate the uh, fertilization of any species, human, animal, monster. And that's how they breed. It's not so much on the superhuman end, it's on the monster end that allows them to have children. Poor him what? Imagine sleeping and then some random fuck wakes and beats you to death. Yeah, true. I didn't put him on the list. I guess it doesn't matter. Do you think there'll be any chance to see a point where MC hits Evo 6? Whatever. What the fuck's Evo 6? What the fuck are you talking about? Monsters are Asari confirmed? <laughs> yeah, some of them. Alright, Tiffany. Tiffany, hmm, hmm, hmm. What do I think about old Tiff? Yeah. First up, I'll say, I don't like her initial design, but I really love her redesign. I think her redesign is one of the best. Up there with Emily's. Really good, really good redesign. We'll start, we'll start with that. She's... Her goals are not properly elucidated on at the moment. There's still much more for her motivations to be fleshed out. There's, there's a lot of room for her to grow as a character. Emotionally, she hasn't really grown too much because she hasn't really had any emotional movements. Not too many, anyway. She's a very cold character, which I generally like. I like characters that aren't... That are a little bit standoffish, especially to start with. I don't like when characters are too buddy buddy too immediately. There's a place for it, but I, li I generally like this type of character. The whole infiltration arc with Hero was alright. It could have been better. With the Tiffany speaking New Year and all that. The whole ki capture the Minyak, Minyak arc is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'd say. Cheese. She's about as good as a Dexter. I think she has a lot of the same things Dexter has. 
But you know, she has tits and stuff, so she gets up she gets put above him. Yeah, yeah. Good character. Good character. Not as good as her sister, you think? Hmm. Tiff is high well done, not gonna lie. Yeah, I think so as well. Tiff hasn't got that much character development, but she's growing on me. Yeah. Twin's dad looks like Julius Belmont from Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. Just Google and compare. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, yeah, we'll have a look. Julius Belmont. And yeah, he's kind of kind of like that. A little bit different. But yeah, I can see the resemblance. I hope eventually the MC will find a way to be t told how to fix that so maybe he could impregnate the girls he's with because it looks like Alice got really sad when that was told around her. Hmm, she did get a bit sad, didn't she? Yeah, it just depends. Dildo Salesman is high tier. Could you share if MC and his powers are physically weaker? Are physically weaker? Physically a weaker type. It was also mentioned after Alice and Michael's fight in the bunker how they're physically about as strong as the MC and more durable. Obviously they aren't normal, but Alexis also mentions how form changes are usually pretty swishy. Again, obviously his memory trait wouldn't be physical type, but what about body? Does the body give weak bodies? The body does not give weak bodies, but the memory does give weak bodies. And so MC is kind of, he's in the middle of that. So he's not as squishy as, say, I don't know, Scylla would have been, assuming they were the same level. But he's not as sturdy as Ella. That said, even for those of the body, in terms of durability, their form is kind of amorphous because of how they change. So it's kind of like they take wounds easily, so that they can change their shape easily. That's basically how it goes. So even for those of the body, they're, they're not, they're physically strong, like, as in they can lift shit, uh, like, really good. Like, physically, they could be about as strong as Alice and Michael. But in terms of durability, they're always kind of soft, so that they can change shapes easier. That said, those purely of the body can also make themselves extremely, extremely durable. More durable than most. So that's how it is. It's kind of mentioned a little bit in the game. So if uh, I meant if we'd uh, see MC and get level 5, or do you think you'll get to version 1 of the game before that could probably occur? Uh, I don't know. You said last stream that you could survive the superhuman infection and got go scot free without powers if you survive. But now I have a question: Can you get infected two times and in the second time you get powers if you didn't get the first time, or just explode slash get premature immunity? No, what you mean? Like if you get infected once but you don't change, will getting infected a second time do the job? Is that what you mean? If the if that's the case, generally speaking, no, but it's not impossible. Tiffany is a good character, have good tits and body, and a mid-development, but good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ella can make her body and others very hard. <laughs> yeah. All right, Willie. No, we're, we're getting close to finishing. That's all right. Old Willie. What do we think about Willie? He feels all right. I didn't add the other TV interviewers because I couldn't be bothered, but uh. Yeah, he's the guy who uh, interviews you and Brianna on TV. He's he's decent. He does his job. Gets killed. Made Cole look better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just all right. He's just all right. There's nothing special about him. Liz, uh, another of the main girls. Liz, Liz, Liz. What do I think about her? Mm, mm. I've said last, last stream, or the stream before that, I think her side route was one of the weaker side routes. Okay, compared to uh, some of the others, I think it's not as good. And I do have some thoughts about rewriting. 
not rewriting, just adding in some things, like expanding on it a little bit. So there's that. In terms of personality, she's cold. Not, not actually cold. She's very lethargic, very lazy, very detached. She's a lot like the MC in a way. Female MC, I suppose you could say. But, uh, you know, a, li a little bit more detached than he is. I do like lazy girls. I, I, I find that entertaining. Liz is better than Amber, you reckon? Hmm. Yeah. Liz perfect. Liz amazing. Love her. Boring. <laughs> I'm definitely conflicted with Liz. She's weird, but she definitely makes you care for her and Amber. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What do I think? I think Liz... Amazing. I like her a lot, even though her side route was weaker. Weaker than Emily's comparatively. I think her role in the main story is just better. I, th I think. Oh, I don't know. I, I like Liz. Uh, I particularly like the scene I did of the confession of the MC to uh, Liz. I like how that was done. I like how she's been acting in the uh, the twin arc. You know, it's not over yet, but so far I like how she's been going. I like what she's been doing. I do. I do like her a lot. Hmm. Yeah. As for her design, uh, it's good. It's not as good as Emily's, I don't think. I think it's better than Amber's. I like long hair more than short hair, typically. But Amber's is still good, is it? You know, twins, you know. The latest story made me audibly say, you monster. Yeah, yeah, sucks, doesn't it? It's wholesome how she can take care of Amber in this arc spe specifically, especially. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty, I think she'd be amazing. Yeah, she's a good character. I like her. Deus. I shouldn't have put him on the list. But... As he's, for the role he has played in the game. Hmm, hmm, where do I want Deus? He has one of the cooler dead ends in my game. One of the cooler ones, I'd say. But his actual role in the main story is virtually nothing. Other than being, I guess, mysterious. Which is fine in itself, but it's, it's not a whole lot of character. He's... I like his design, I like his mask. Especially like the sharpened redesign. I think he is well done. We're well done. He's about as good as Clark. He's about there. He needs more time to... You know, flesh out a bit. He's a deus ex manica machina ex, well that's his name. He does give the heart back to Val, that's not nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think his character has been... He's been done as, as about as good as I expected him to be. He's alright. He's pretty good. Amber, ah, uh, the other twin. Uh, Amber. I like Amber's... I like Amber's route better than Liz's route, her side route. The goal with Amber's route was to make her like a... To make her, compared to the other routes, a very normal route. Because she's probably the most normal girl in Superhuman. Like, she's just down to earth, normal human. She, she kind of gets pissed a bit. She's short-tempered, triggered really easy. And I find that funny. But she's not like super angry like Nico or anything like that. She's got a, generally speaking, kind demeanor like that. And the, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the root, her route was the most normal out of all the routes I think I did. And I like how that turned out, where you're investigating the Dean, trying to figure out what her, how her grades are falling, what her problems are, and then uh, finding out that it was actually her mother behind all of it. I think it was all, I think it was all pretty well done. That said... I think I like Liz in the main story better than Amber. 
I'm going to put her next to Amber. Next to Liz. We're going to put her below. I like <clears throat> I like them. I like them. They both, they go well together. We'll say that. Uh, equally boring. <laughs> Amber is mid or top amazing. Mm, yeah, she's bottom amazing, I'd say. Amber, as I like to call her, twin number two. <laughs> I like more Liz than Amber, but she's really good for me. You did a great job because that's exactly what I thought about her. She's super normal. Yeah, yeah. Liz Supremacy. So Liz is better main story while Amber is better on the side route. Yeah, twins, am I right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'd say. That's what I'd say. Uh, oh, Evander. Forgot about him. Yeah. Yeah. What do I think? He's alright. He hasn't done a whole lot. I like his personality. He's about as good as his sister. He's a... He's a pretty serious dude. Hasn't got... We haven't really got into him much at all. He's, he's decent. He's decent. I like how his personality contrasts his sister. And I really like his design. Both his and his sister's designs are really cool. So I like that. But other than that, yeah, you know, he's all right. He's all right. Ooh, Jake. One of the early villains, along with Klaus. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's probably one of my longest developed characters, along with Daryl. I set Jake up for a long, long time. Long, long time. And I think the payoff was pretty good. I do think the payoff was pretty good. The whole battle against him in the Prime Minister's office and all that. I think it paid off pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. But... It could have been better. Could have been better. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say he's not as good as Klaus, but he's still in the Amazing Tier. His relationship with Mia, the, like, the kind of guilt he felt versus the resentment towards the MC after Ella fostered it a bit, I think he was interesting. It's a unique type of character, I think. And his powers are cool and stuff like that as well. Is it, it's, not, it's not that his powers are cool, per se. I think just the way he used them was quite interesting. Jake is really good. Liberal? Is he a liberal? I don't know. Uh, Jake, my friend, my buddy, my pal. Trash can, amazing to you. Yeah, I'd say. He's a low, mid, well done. Only problem I have with him is he's a one-trick pony, which makes sense because he skipped a never able to. Yeah, he's kind of limited in how his powers. But I kind of like how that works as well. Jake has a lot of hate, but I think that's mostly because of how hostile he is after the transformation. Even after we beat him, he's still really hostile. Well, yeah, you just kicked his ass. What do you expect? But yeah, mm. yeah, Jake is also one of the more controversial characters. I think he and Daryl, coincidentally from the same arc, are both the, probably the most controversial characters of any I've made. And, you know, that's fair enough. I can see the hateable aspects of both. Jake is, Jake is high, well done, to low, amazing. Mm, mm. He may be a very cool... He may be a p pussy, but he's a very cool pussy. Yeah. Jake is basically when the victim becomes the aggressor and his consequences bite his ass eventually. That's good. Yeah, I do like that. I do like that. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to, I think, implement him, I think. Put Evander below Devana. Do you reckon? Yeah. Hmm. Nah. Nah. I think uh, Evander got the cooler fight uh, against Matt. Ah, old Michael. Big boy. 6'11 giant himself. Hmm, this is a good picture. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I like his redesign. I'll say that to start off with. There's a lot of memes about uh, Michael being a bit of a baby face <laughs> early on in the game. 
And I get that. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, I do like how he's been redesigned to, to look the way he is. A lot of people like Michael. Probably a fan favorite, I'd say. Like almost everyone I, I see in Discord or whatever, they all say Michael's good. They... I, I don't think there's... Even his fights, everyone seems to like all his fights as well. I don't think there's there's a whole lot of people that don't like him, which is good. It's good to be universally loved, but uh, I don't know how high do I want to put him. Hmm. Hmm. His human fights are really cool. Yeah. 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 One thing about Michael that this goes into how you write certain characters, and I kind of made this mistake with Daryl. Like a lot of people, a lot of media, a lot of stories. They write intelligent characters by explaining how intelligent they are. And to an extent, I did this with Daryl by setting him up as like a genius kind of character who, you know, he does well in school and does all that shit. And that's fine. I mean, it works. It gets the point across. It, it's fine to have smart characters that, that are smart like that. But for Michael, almost everyone in my community sees him as incredibly intelligent, even though I've never... In the game, I think. I don't think I've ever said he's intelligent at all. And I think that's because most of the actions he makes are very intelligent. They're not even necessarily intelligent. They're just very logical. The things that you would do if you were in his situation. He's given a lot of problems, and he finds a way to solve those problems in a pretty good way. And so that's why I think a lot of people think he's intelligent, even though I never explicitly state that in the game. And I say... I, and I think that's probably the best way to write an intelligent character. I think it's better than just having them explained on the outset about, oh, they did this science project and, you know, they, they did this and did th they did that, they're professors and all that. You know, which, you know, not necessarily criticizing that. I think that's a perfectly valid way to introduce a smart character. But I think the way Michael does it, I think it, it engages people a lot more. And it makes it a lot more believable in people's eyes. Anyway, with all that in mind. Uh, ah, shit. Am I going to put him... Is he perfect, though? I, haven't, I don't know if I've implemented enough of his character to call him perfect. But I do like him significantly more than the Glake with. Uh, uh, We'll put them below Alice. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, Jake is surprisingly using his powers as a crutch. He's smart as fuck. Daryl uses his intelligence to enhance his powers. Jake doesn't. That's true. That's true. Uh, Michael is high, amazing, or perfect. Mm, amazing for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, no time for ladies, only time for fights. <laughs> yeah. He's street smart, says good battle instincts. Cunning. Yeah, yeah, cunning is a good way to put it. Michael punches his problems away. Oh, yeah, he does do that. Michael is logical, not intelligent. Yeah, yeah. That's, tr that's all true. That's all true. He just has high combat IQ, which makes people think he's smart in general. Yeah. Perfect is called my flaws. Yes, my boy. Should I try a perfect example? Yeah, yeah, that's true. During the fight from his pub, he acts and thinks really tactically, but he's sort of too fight focused in casual conversation. Yeah, he's a bit like uh, socially retarded. Yeah, that's true. Is Michael a version? Hmm. Hmm. I could tell you, but. Next update might give some answers to that question. So I'll, I'll give you a little teaser there. All right. Who's next? Ah, the Rebus. Old Reby. Hmm. Hmm. I like the character. Very, I'd say some of the most interesting lore, I think. 
But I haven't really gotten too much into it, so I don't know if I can rate based on that. Quite mysterious, like a lot of the other Chosen. I like the design a lot. I'm not going to say as good as a Glaive with, but I do like the design quite a lot. And the connection to Daryl and all that, and how he plays a role in Daryl, or they, doesn't really have a gender, plays a role in the, uh, in Daryl's transformation. I'd say about as good as Nick's. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well done. For, for the amount he's in the game, well done. Well done. Ah, Nameless Sin Fighter that may or may not get more uh, information on in the game. Uh, yeah. Boring. But kind of fucks, fucks her up. Uh, we might as well put this guy in there as well. Just Sin Fighters. Yep. They, they'll show up again. But I, I didn't design them just to throw them away. We'll say that. But uh, as it stands, they're basically useless. <laughs> uh, Henry. Old Henry. Mm. Another intriguing character. We haven't seen a whole lot. I like his personality, though. The uh, kind of very casual, but also in kind of a very somber way. It's a... Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'd put him around Dexter's level. I like him. He hasn't done a whole lot, but I like how he's been implemented in the story so far. There's a certain cool factor that also helps with more powerful characters. That's why Bernie's up so high. Because, uh, you know, he's got the cool factor, and I think Henry is the same. So they get a bit of a bonus for that. Maybe the most interesting captain? Well, he's a lieutenant. Man is literally the storm that is approaching. <laughs> yeah, true. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's well done, well done. Ah, the uh, the eighth. Hmm. Hmm. Just with the rest, not much to say there. Eleventh, just with the rest. Lola appears briefly in Amber's route. Webcam. Model was only fans out when I wrote this character. I can't even remember. I don't think it was. She's alright. She she had a cool sex scene. I think her sex scene was funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's not much to say about her. Tess. Hmm. Tess. I like her design to start with. I've re redesigned her a little bit, but for her, like a sprite, I still need to do a proper redesign. She's pretty cool. I don't know how well people relate to her. It's hard for me to say or describe. I'm not really sure. But yeah, she's pretty cool. Mm. What about Jess at? She's about Jess's level. Slightly below Jess. I think Jess is more interesting. But Kelly, a better, Tess has the better design. So, we'll put her there. Tess is seriously the hottest girl in the game. I love her personality too. Yeah. Tess is definitely into ranked competitive sex. Oh, yeah. I was going to do something about that. Yeah, maybe it'll happen later. Maybe. Oh, we're getting to the end. In the final stretch. Yeah, it's been... Three and a half hours. That's a good amount of time. All right. Memory, aka the fourth. Slightly better than body. Hasn't done a whole lot, but she sucks your dick, so she she gets a higher place. That's old mother. Yeah. First sex scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, for my first sex scene, it turned out pretty bad. The first one I ever did. It, tu it turned out pretty good. I'm a uh, yeah. I'm not unhappy with how that turned out. Closest to incest we got. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. 
I'm late again. No? Ah, oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, see, that's why I don't know when the actual right time is to stream. I never actually know. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, all right. Uh, just put this wealth right here. First, it's slightly more interesting. There. The first uh, got a little bit of a redesign. I don't think I've shown it yet, though. But the first looks a little bit different now. Ah, Lai Gong. Lai Gong had a cool fight. His fight with Michael was... It was good. The myth behind him, the Asian one, I didn't go too in depth other than... Other than that uh, he uses lightning. But I think his powers were cool. I think the crystal aspect of him was also cool. And pro he provided a good foil for Michael during his uh, ascension. A good final test for his human self, I think. I like him. I like him. I'd say he's well done. And he's... We're about them well done. I don't rate him too high. He's, he's about there. He, he did a good job. Michael dodging lightning still gets me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he was a cool fight. It's mainly just, he doesn't really have a character. He's just had a cool fight, that's all. Which one was the purple one again? The 12th? If you mean this one, this is the 12th. <laughs> all right. This, this purple one is the 9th. Now, Duncan, old tree man. Hmm. Where? I like him. It was cool. He, his introduction, I think, was, uh, you know, with uh, getting the monster that was chasing Lori. That was pretty good. And his fight against Ella, short-lived, but also pretty good. Three out of ten? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> really grounded in reality? Yeah, yeah. I think... He was... He was well done. He had a bit of a character. He is alright. Team Tree, literally. Yeah, yeah. Poor bastard. Shows up, gets turned into a tree, leaves. Yeah, yeah. Poor guy, Ella, couldn't just leave him alone. <laughs> alright, alright. That's enough of Tree Man here. Hex and Ring. Hex and Ring? Hex and Ring. I don't know how to say the name. I just saw the spelling. Green teleporty monster. Hex. Doesn't have any personality at all. Doesn't have a fight scene. But is cool. And he's the main reason Sin still survives, as well, at least in the form that it does. Hmm. Very useful character for me. <laughs> it makes my job easier having a character like him. I like his history with Nico, although we haven't got much detail on that. Although, and it's not specifically him either. Next update, or the update after, might expand on him a little bit. Just a smidge. But. Hmm. Hmm. He's decent. He's up here with the fossils, but he's not as powerful, so I'll put him lower. He's alright. Yeah, he had, a cool, he had a cool fight with Nico. That's all right. Uh, old Hexy. Yeah, yeah. Pop device tier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Decent. Hex is perfect. Yeah. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah. Hex character development to Green Ring is even bigger than Green Ring is real in training. Yeah. All right. Oh, Malik. One of the... Uh, one of the lead captains. Hmm. It also fought Bernard. <laughs> yeah, for a split second. Hmm. Malik is cool. I like him. He's another one of the few pillars of good 
within Heroes Association. Not that the others are necessarily bad, it's just... Malik is one of the ones that are truly good, that want to do good. But that said, he's not as far into that as Elijah is. He's a little bit more of a realist. He's a lot older, he's a lot more experienced. His personality is good. I like his, uh, his jolly personality. Pretty, pretty good. I think it's fun to be around him. And I think what little fighting we have seen of him has been pretty cool. The attacks he's shown have been pretty awesome. All in all, he's about on par with Bernard, in my opinion. I like his design a lot. Not as powerful. I thought they were strong from how their powers were described. Who are you talking about? I don't know who you're talking about, Incubus. He was spoiled super early, actually. Yeah, true. Malak is high, well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, well done. The pure hero type. No, I wouldn't say he's pure, but uh, he's good. I think Burn might be the second most good, actually. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depends on how you look at it. I don't know. It'll take a bit more time to see how good or bad Burn really is. He needs a bit more time. He saves the civilians from Aisheth. He did. He did. That may have just been so his son wouldn't bitch at him. Hmm. When he's a tough guy who says how much he hates everyone, but in reality he deeply cares. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, the second. Hmm. Yes, the second. Of the designs, he has one of my favourite for the apostles. I do like the second a lot. Just purely because I, I like the design. Got lots of stuff for him in the future. Not hasn't done too much now. For the brief moment, he did show power. I do like. And maybe he's not. Maybe he's not as better than the parents, but I think he's one of the better ones. Yeah. So far, I like his design. That's about all I can say about him. Ah, uh, now Xanthi boy, the final three, and we'll do Zara first since she's one of the less interesting characters. What have we got for Zara? Uh, one of the more chipper people in Sin. What do we think of Zara? She's about bright here. I like her. She's alright. She has potential. But we haven't really gotten into detail on her powers. Or even too much of her personality. There'll be a bit more. But. For now. Her and Briar are about in the same tier. Basically, just decent. She's a decent character. I wonder how it would be superhuman with voices. Uh, I'd say it'd be probably be really weird. <laughs> That'd be my guess. I've seen some uh, visual novels use AI to voice some of the characters. I don't know how good... I don't think it'd work for mine. For one, I can't be stuck doing it. Too much work. So that's, that's a big problem right there. But also, it sounds a bit weird. I, I feel like it kind of... I think people would feel more comfortable imagining the voices of the characters. You could always make it optional, but then I'd have to fucking do it, and I can't be stuffed doing it, so. <laughs> Xanth. Xanth, Xanth, Xanth. He is also one of my favorite characters. Right next to his son. I like him. He's very straightforward in the way he approaches things. And the... And very uh, open about his goals. He won't necessarily tell you the truth. Because, what the fuck do you need to know? He's the fucking scientist, yeah? Alright? You, you don't need to know the truth. You just follow the orders and you'll be fine. Alright? So he won't necessarily tell you the truth. But he's generally speaking pretty open about his principles and, where, and the direction he's heading. And I like that about him. I like the role he plays in Hero. I like what I have said about his law and about 
is person. I don't know if any of you have picked up what would make him so special. I, I don't know how far exactly I've described it, but he's... I like that there's more to him than initially appears. I think he's a good character. Is Arthur's perfect here? Yeah, I don't know about that. I also like him a lot. Respect the old man. Yeah. Also a fan of spiders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Santa literally doesn't have time to explain it to you. Yeah, he's, he's doing a lot of stuff. He's doing a lot of work. Wait, you don't pronounce the E in Xanth? It's just like Xanth? Yeah, it's not Xanthy. It's, it's Xanth. At least, <laughs> that's how I say it. <laughs> Weird world. Just asking, what are some nice traits for a sexy character girl, excluding being thick and goth, probably pale as a paper, and sociopathic tendencies? <laughs> what do you mean? You mean <laughs> a character girl? I assume you're not talking about real life. What are some nice traits for a girl? I don't know. Oh, I like a girl who's honest. So I think characters like that. But also a character who lies a lot is also interesting. There's a lot of things that can make a girl interesting in a game. Or a, a story. It's a lot of things. But yeah. I'd say amazing for Xanth. He's I really like his character. Now the final one. Number Z. Letter Z. Old Zack. Captain, who spent most of the game crippled and injured. Nico hates him. He's mostly indifferent to her. How does he go? Whereabouts is he sitting? We'll start off with, I like his power. There's... There's a way to do time travel in game. And in my opinion... I'm not going to say what the right way is, because I don't necessarily know. But the wrong way, in my opinion, is the one that, where it creates a thousand parallel worlds. Even though Steinscape does that really interesting, and I think it's one of the only shows that does that really interesting. I don't like games, or stories, media, where there's time travel that makes a thousand different parallel worlds. And they're all existing simultaneously with each other. And you can go back and forth, you do this and that. I like games with a single timeline. If one thing is changed, it changes everything else. There's no separate bullshit happening. That said, I like the way Zack's powers are limited. I'm not going to go into detail about how exactly they function, how they function, because there is some complicated factors to it. But overall, I'm quite happy with how Zack works. I'd say he's mid well done, right around uh, Deus's. That's where, that's where I put him. For me, this is this is a good place for Zach. I like his background. That uh, that he's faced a super strong enemy before. Very interesting character. Yeah, and I, and I think his personality is mainly business focused. Not necessarily good. Not necessarily bad. He's a very pragmatic kind of guy. And I do like that. Like, is this, like I've got a lot of characters in my game. Like, I mean, look at look at them all. And I like to have their personalities, they don't have to be extremely different from each other, but they have to be meaningfully different. And I think Zack is mainly meaningfully different than the other characters in the game. And I appreciate that. Uh, Zack at question mark here. Well, that's where Darius would be if he was there. Zack is mysterious. I like him and I'm intrigued. Also, time powers OP as fuck. Yeah, it depends. Literally reloading the superpower. I love to imagine he tried to compete with the player for power of save and reloading. Yeah, yeah. Zach avoided Club Penguin scene, so as has fucking King anti PDF files. Yeah. The theory is that time travel is just jumping in a different parallel world. Yeah, I don't like that type of uh, game. Or <laughs> time travel story. I hope Zack's power is not time travel, but other time manipulations like accelerating time or stopping time. Yeah, you'll see in the time. In, when the time comes, you'll see. Could you share if there's a reason the apostles are ordered the way they are? As in, any reason why authority is the firstborn is time is the fifth? Uh, yeah, what do I want to say? 
I'm not going to say. There is a reason, but it's very abstract and not overly important either. But it does give a little bit away. So yeah, we, we did it. How much IQ Xanth has? Uh, he doesn't have IQ. He's, he's something different. He's separate from that. Whereas Shockley, though, he's not on here. He, he doesn't belong here. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Do I, am I happy with this? Let's have a quick look around. Anything I want to change? Hello, Valraven, Sila. Do I think Sila is better than Valraven? I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to just go on instinct. I'm going to leave it. Well, Xanth old 50 years ago. It depends what you mean by old. He's about the same age as the captains. That's, a bit, that's where his age is at. Uh, Deus is here. Shockcave isn't. Deus shouldn't be here either. But Shockcave isn't here. Uh, Glaifuth. Uh, get, uh, may I put a Glaifuth a bit too high? Put it on the bottom. He's a bit high as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. What about these guys? These ones on top? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe Derek's a bit too high. No, no, he's fine. Kelly. Go down there. Marcus as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this tier list. What do you guys think? Do you think this is, this is uh, the right the right uh, the right order for these characters? What, what do you guys think? Yeah. Or if he was like 40 when they were like 20. He's about the same age. It's okay as it is. Literally nobody with one C on the list, but no shock keep. Yeah, yeah, no shock keep. He, he he doesn't belong on the list. He, he doesn't fit with the rest. The only perfect characters are Xanth, shock keep, and hobo. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the hobo. I forgot about him. He died only because he allowed Ella to kill him. Yeah, yeah. It's three a.m. where I am. Uh, Lol, the mayor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we went, we've been doing this for a while. Jesus, four hours. Ugh. Yeah, I think it's about time. About time we, uh, we ended this. This is good. I wasn't sure how long it would take, but I guess I got a, long, a lot of fucking characters, so I guess it, it does make sense it took this long. What will next stream be about, Weird World? Oh, yeah, yeah, we should get into that. Uh, like I said at the start, I'll do a brief... Record a brief uh, video. I'm just going to do it on stream because it's easier for me. About uh, about whatever I uh, decide to do. It'll be probably be something about writing stuff like that. So yeah, there'll be that. Uh, and then for the meat of the stream, the main part. I think I was going to do games. A game. Chill for six minutes, round out the clock. Yeah, well, we're already three minutes in. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to do a game, I think. A game stream. I was thinking, like, a, a story-based game. Goodbye, Sharab. See you, See you mate. Like, a, a story-based game. Like, something like, a, I heard Undertale is really good. I've heard that's a good game. So maybe... I want to play, like, a story-based game. Because I can probably give a little bit of insight... On like a story based game. Like uh, how I think it's written and all that. I can. Like, it won't be just like me playing a game. And 
not talking about shit because I don't know shit about games, like proper games. But if it's story-based games, I might be able to provide some commentary. Commentary. So I think something like Undertale, something like that, maybe interesting. Well, blasphemous. That's a, that's a gameplay game, but uh, but I heard that it has a good law. Blasphemous. So I don't know. Play Chrono Trigger. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. If uh, you have ideas for games to play, put it in the Discord. I'll I'll give them a look. But yeah, I think next next stream will be will be gaming. Oh, and I next stream, which will be next week, it might be a double, like a it'll be Saturday and Sunday maybe, because Twitch has this thing where you have to stream bloody seven days in a month to become an affiliate. Like I've got all the other requirements, it's just that I have to stream seven days a month, and I don't know why they want me to stream so much. Jesus, like I've got a normal job, I can't be just streaming all the time. Fuck me. But yeah, so we're going to be doing a couple of doubles. So, yeah, it'll be for the next three weekends, it'll be Saturday and Sunday. Then the last one, it'll just be one. Whatever, whatever it takes to get me within that month so I can get that fucking affiliate bullshit. So, uh, I don't even know what affiliate, what does affiliate get you? Do you get anything good for being affiliate? Is, is it, what, what do you get? Do you get like emotes or something, right? People can use emotes. I, I, I don't know what the details are, but they said my next goal or milestone or whatever they say on Twitch is the affiliate program. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll be trying to get that. We'll be trying to get that. Emotes, subs. What's a sub? Like subscriber? Is that, is that channel points? What are, what are channel points? Also ads. Oh, I know what ads are. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of words coming at me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out next week. So, yeah. Possibly, I don't know how long it will take, take me to beat the game. But maybe I'll split it up. So I'll do half the game on the Saturday, half the game on the Sunday. And then, you know, that'll be the stream. Or however long it takes, you know. We'll just cut it up, slice it up a bit. So, by the way, big ass prevents like but when it'll happen, man. It'll happen. Subs allow people to give you like five bucks a month. Oh, so it's like a Patreon kind of thing. Ah, okay. I mean, yeah, that's cool. I mean, you could just do the Patreon, but whatever, whatever people want to do, if they want to do it, that's fine. Anyway, thanks for coming. This was good. My first stream on YouTube, and uh, my third on Twitch. So, yeah, yeah. Let's see, uh, where did I put? I still got 63 of you here. Yeah, a lot of you stayed around late. So you guys need to go to bed? God damn. And how much, what have we got on YouTube? We've got eight on YouTube. Oh no, we've got 12 on YouTube. 74 likes. How do I have 74 likes on YouTube if I've got 12 viewers? Oh. Well, you know, you know, I'm sure it'll fix itself up. <laughs> yeah, see you guys. I'm heading off. Have, have a good, uh, have a good weekend. Do a cute voice for sure. I don't have a cute voice, mate. I'm Australian. We don't, we don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> see you, mate. See, see you guys later.